My Immortal, written by Tara Gillespie, narrated by James Tullis. Chapter 1. Author's Note. Special fangs. Get it? Because I'm gothic. To my new GF. Ew, not in that way. Raven. Bloody Tears 666 for helping me with the story and spelling. You rock. Justin, you're the love of my deprazing life. You rock too. MCR rocks. Hi, my name is Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, and I have long ebony black hair. That's how I got my name, with purple streaks and red tips that reaches my mid-back, and icy blue eyes like limpid tears, and a lot of people tell me I look like Amy Lee. Author's note, if you don't know who she is, get the hell out of here. I'm not related to Gerard Way, but I wish I was because he's a major fucking hottie. I'm a vampire, but my teeth are straight and white. I have pale white skin. I'm also a witch, and I go to a magic school called Hogwarts in England where I'm in the seventh year. I'm 17. I'm a goth, in case you couldn't tell, and I wear mostly black. I love Hot Topic and I buy all my clothes from there. For example, today I was wearing a black corset with matching lace around it and a black leather miniskirt, pink fishnets, and black combat boots. I was wearing black lipstick, white foundation, black eyeliner, and red eyeshadow. I was walking outside Hogwarts. It was snowing and raining, so there was no sun, which I was very happy about. A lot of preps stared at me. I put up my middle finger at them. Hey, Ebony, shouted a voice. I looked up. It was Draco Malfoy. What's up, Draco? I asked. Nothing, he said shyly. But then I heard my friends call me, and I had to go away. Author's note. Is it good? Please tell me, Fangs. Chapter 2. Author's note. Thanks to Bloody Tear 666 for helping me with the chapter. BTW, prep stop flaming my story, okay? The next day I woke up in my bedroom. It was snowing and raining again. I opened the door of my coffin and drank some blood from a bottle I had. My coffin was black ebony and inside it was hot pink velvet with black lace on the ends. I got out of my coffin and took of my giant MCR t-shirt which I used for pajamas. Instead I put on a black leather dress, a pentagram necklace, combat boots, and black fishnets on. I put on four pairs of earrings in my pierced ears and put my hair in a kind of messy bun. My friend, Willow, author's note, Raven, this is you, woke up and then grinned at me. She flipped her long, waist-length raven black hair with pink streaks and opened her forest green eyes. She put on her Marilyn Manson t-shirt with a black mini, fishnets, and pointy high-heeled boots. We put on our makeup. Black lipstick, white foundation, and black eyeliner. OMFG, I saw you talking to Draco Malfoy yesterday, she said excitedly. Yeah, so? I said, blushing. Do you like Draco? She asked as we went out of the Slytherin common room and into the Great Hall. No, I so fucking don't, I shouted. Yeah, right, she exclaimed. Just then, Draco walked up to me. Hi, he said. Hi, I replied flirtily. Guess what, he said. What, I asked. Well, good Charlotte and I are having a concert in Hogsmeade, he told me. Oh. My. Fucking. God, I screamed. I love GC. They are my favorite band, besides MCR. Well, do you want to go with me, he asked. I gasped. Chapter 3. Author's note. Stop flaming the story, preps, okay? Otherwise, fangs to the gothic people for the good revival. Fangs, again, Raven. Oh yeah, by the way, I don't own this or the lyrics for good Charlotte. On the night of the concert, I put on my black lace-up boots with high heels. Underneath them were ripped red fishnets. Then I put on a black leather mini dress with all this corset stuff on the back and front. I put on matching fishnet on my arms. I straightened my hair and made it look all spiky. I felt a little depressed then, so I slit one of my wrists. I read a depressing book while I waited for it to stop bleeding and I listened to some GC. I painted my nails black and put on TONS of black eyeliner. Then I put on some black lipstick. I didn't put on foundation because I was pale anyway. I drank some human blood so I was ready to go to the concert. I went outside. Draco was waiting there in front of his flying car. He was wearing a Simple Plan t-shirt, they would play at the show too, baggy black skater pants, black nail polish, and a little eyeliner. Author's note, a lot for cool boys wear it, okay? Hi Draco, I said in a depressed voice. Hi Ebony, he said back. We walked into his flying black Mercedes Benz, the license plate said 666, and flew into the place with the concert. On the way we listened excitedly to Good Charlotte and Marilyn Manson. We both smoked cigarettes and drugs. 
When we got there, we both hopped out of the car. We went to the mosh pit at the front of the stage and jumped up and down as we listened to Good Charlotte. You come in cold, you're covered in blood, they're all so happy you've arrived. The doctor cuts your cord, hands you to your mom, she sets you free into this life, sang Joel. I don't own the lyrics to that song. Joel is so fucking hot, I said to Draco, pointing to him as he sung, filling the club with his amazing voice. Suddenly, Draco looked sad. What's wrong? I asked as we moshed to the music. Then I caught on. Hey, it's okay, I don't like him better than you, I said. Really? asked Draco sensitively, and he put his arm around me all protective. Really? I said. Besides, I don't even know Joel, and he's going out with Hillary fucking Duff. I really hate that little bitch, I said disgustedly, thinking of her ugly blonde face. The night went on really well, and I had a great time. So did Draco. After the concert, we drank some beer and asked Benji and Joel for their autographs and photos with them. We got GC concert tees, Draco and I crawled back into the Mercedes Benz. But Draco didn't go back into Hogwarts. Instead, he drove his car into... The Forbidden Forest. Chapter 4 Author's note, I said stop flaming, okay? Ebony's name is Enobi, not Mary Sue, okay? Draco is so in love with her that he is acting deferent. They knew each other before, okay? Draco! I shouted. What the fuck do you think you are doing? Draco didn't answer, but he stopped the flying car and he walked out of it. I walked out of it too, curiously. What the fucking hell? I asked angrily. Ebony? He asked. What? I snapped. Draco leaned in extra close, and I looked into his gothic red eyes. He was wearing color contacts, which revealed so much depressing sorrow and evilness, and then suddenly I didn't feel mad anymore. And then... Suddenly, just as I, Draco, kissed me passionately. Draco climbed on top of me, and we started to make out keenly against a tree. He took of my top, and I took of his clothes. I even took of my bra. Then he put his thingy into my you-know-what, and we did it for the first time. Oh, 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 I screamed. I was beginning to get an orgasm. We started to kiss everywhere, and my pale body became all warm. And then... What the hell are you doing, you motherfuckers? It was... Dumbledore! Chapter 5 Author's note... STOP FLAMING! If you flam, it mends you're a prep or a pusser. Do only resin Dumbledore swore is cause he had a headache, okay? On top of that, he was mad at them having four sex. P.S. I'm not updating until I get five good revows. Dumbledore made and Draco and I follow him. He kept shouting at us angrily. You ludicrous fools! He shouted. I started to cry tears of blood down my pallid face. Draco comforted me. When we went back to the castle, Dumbledore took us to Professor Snape and Professor McGonagall, who were both looking very angry. They were having sexual intercourse in the Forbidden Forest! He yelled in a furious voice. Why did you do such a thing, you mediocre dunces? Asked Professor McGonagall. How dare you? Demanded Professor Snape. And then Draco shrieked. Because I love her! Everyone was quiet. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall still looked mad, but Professor Snape said, Fine, very well. You may go up to your rooms. Draco and I went upstairs while the teachers glared at us. Are you okay, Ebony? Draco asked me gently. Yeah, I guess, I lied. I went up to the girls' dorm and brushed my teeth and my hair and changed into a low-cut, black floor-length dress with red lace all around it and black high heels. When I came out, Draco was standing in front of the bathroom, and he started to sing, I Just Wanna Live by Good Charlotte. I was so flattered, even though he wasn't supposed to be there. We hugged and kissed. After that, we said goodnight, and he reluctantly went back to his room. Chapter 6 Author's note, She get up, preps, okay? P.S. I would not update until you give me good revows. The next day, I woke up in my coffin. I put on a black miniskirt that was all ripped around the end, and a matching top with red skulls all over it, and high-heeled boots that were black. I put on two pairs of skull earrings and two crosses in my ears. I spray-painted my hair with purple. In the Great Hall, I ate some Count Chocula cereal with blood instead of milk, and a glass of red blood. Suddenly, someone bumped into me. All the blood spilled over my top. Bastard! I shouted angrily. I regretted saying it when I looked up because I was looking into the pale white face of a gothic boy with spiky black hair with red streaks in it. 
He was wearing so much eyeliner that I was going down his face and he was wearing black lipstick. He didn't have glasses anymore and now he was wearing red contact lenses just like Draco's and there was no scar on his forehead anymore. He had a manly stubble on his chin. He had a sexy English accent. He looked exactly like Joel Madden. He was so sexy that my body went all hot when I saw him, kind of like an erection, only I'm a girl so I didn't get one, you sicko. I'm so sorry, he said in a shy voice. That's all right. What's your name? I questioned. My name's Harry Potter, although most people call me Vampire these days, he grumbled. Why? I exclaimed. Because I love the taste of human blood, he giggled. Well, I am a vampire, I confessed. Really? He whimpered. Yeah, I roared. We sat down to talk for a while, then Draco came up behind me and told me he had a surprise for me, so I went away with him. Chapter 7. Bring Me to Life Author's note, well, okay, you guys, I'm only ridding this because I got five god reviews. And BTW, I won't write the next chapter till I get ten good bonds. Stos flaming or I'll report you. Ebony isn't Mary Sue, okay? She isn't perfect. She's a satanist. And she has problems. She's depressed for God's sake. Draco and I held our pale white pans with black nail polish as we went upstairs. I was wearing red Satanist sings on my nails in red nail polish. Author note, see, does that sound like Mary Sue to you? I waved to Vampire. Dark misery was in his depressed eyes. I guess he was jealous of me that I was going out with Draco. Anyway, I went upstairs excitedly with Draco. We went into his room and locked the door. Then... We started Frenching passively and we took off each other's clothes enthusiastically. He felt me up before I took of my top. Then I took off my black leather bra and he took off his pants. We went on the bed and started making out naked and then he put his boy's thingy in mine and we had sex. See, is that stupid? Oh, Draco, Draco, I screamed while getting an orgasm when all of a sudden I saw a tattoo I had never seen before on Draco's arm. It was a black heart with an arrow through it. On it, in bloody gothic writing, were the words, Vampire! I was so angry. You bastard! I shouted angrily, jumping out of the bed. No, no, but you don't understand, Draco pleaded. But I knew too much. No, you fucking idiot! I shouted. You probably have AIDS anyway! I put on my clothes all huffily and then stomped out. Draco ran out, even though he was naked. He had a really big you-know-what, but I was too mad to care. I stomped out and did so until I was in Vampire's classroom where he was having a lesson with Professor Snape and some other people. Vampire Potter, you motherfucker! I yelled. Chapter 8 Author's note, stop flassing, okay? If you do, then you are a prep. Everyone in the class stared at me, and then Draco came into the room even though he was naked and started begging me to take him back. Ebony, it's not what you think! Draco screamed sadly. My friend, Bloody Mary Smith, smiled at me understatedly. She flipped her long, waist-length gothic black hair and opened her crimson eyes like blood that she was wearing contact lenses on. She had pale white skin that she was wearing white makeup on. Hermione was kidnapped when she was born. Her real parents are vampires and one of them is a witch, but Voldemort killed her mother and her real father committed suicide because he was depressed about it. She still has nightmares about it and she is very haunted and depressed. It also turns out her real last name is Smith and not Granger. Since she has converted to Satanism, she is in Slytherin now, not Gryffindor. What is it that you desire, you ridiculous dimwit? Snape demeaned angrily in his cold voice, but I ignored him. Vampire, I can't believe you cheated on me with Draco, I shouted at him. Everyone gasped. I don't know why Ebony was so mad at me. I had went out with Vampire, I'm bi and so is Ebony, for a while, but then he broke my heart. He dumped me because he liked Brittany, a stupid preppy fucker. We were just good friends now. He had gone through horrible problems, and now he was gothic. Haha, <laughs> like I would hang out with a prep. But I'm not going out with Draco anymore, said Vampire. Yeah, fucking right. Fuck off, you bastard. I screamed. I ran out of the room and into the forbidden forest where I had lost my virility to Draco. Then I started to burst into tears. Chapter 9 Author's note. Stop flaming, okay? I didn't read all the books. This is from the movie, okay, so it's not my fault if Dumbledore swears. Besides, I said he had a headache. 
And the reason Snap doesn't like Harry now is cause he's Christian and Vampire is a Satanist. MCR rocks! I was so mad and sad. I couldn't believe Draco for cheating on me. I began to cry against the tree where I did it with Draco. Then all of a sudden, an horrible man with red eyes and no nose and everything started flying towards me on a broomstick! He didn't have a nose, basically like Voldemort in the movie, and he was wearing all black, but it was obvious he wasn't gothic. It was... Voldemort! No! I shouted in a scared voice, but then Voldemort shouted, Imperious! And I couldn't run away. Crookshanks! I shouted at him. Voldemort fell of his broom and started to scream. I felt bad for him, even though I'm a sadist, so I stopped. Ebony! He yelled. Thou must kill Vampire Potter! I thought about Vampire, and his sexa eyes, and his gothic black hair, and how his face looks just like Joel Madden. I remembered that Draco said I didn't understand, so I thought, what if Draco went out with Vampire before I went out with him and they broke up? No, Voldemort, I shouted back. Voldemort gave me a gun. No, please, I begged. Thou must, he yelled. If thou does not, then I shall kill thy beloved Draco. How did you know? I asked in a surprised way. Voldemort got a dude you're so retarded look on his face. I hath telekinesis, he answered cruelly, and if you doth not kill Vampire, then thou know what will happen to Draco, he shouted. Then he flew away angrily on his broomstick. I was so scared and mad I didn't know what to do. Suddenly Draco came into the woods. Draco, I said. Hi. Hi, he said back, but his face was all sad. He was wearing white foundation and messy eyeliner, kind of like a pentagram, get it, between Joel Madden and Gerard Way. Are you okay? I asked. No, he answered. I'm sorry I got all mad at you, but I thought you cheated on me, I expelled. That's okay, he said all depressed, and we went back into Hogwarts together making out. Chapter 10 Author's note Stip it, you gay fags! If you do not like my story, then fuck off! P.S. It turns out Bloody Mary isn't a muggle after all, she and she and Vampire are evil. That's why they moved houses, okay? I was really scared about Voldemort all day. I was even upset went to rehearsals with my gothic metal band, Bloody Gothic Rose 666. I am the lead singer of it, and I play guitar. People say that we sound like a cross between GC, Slipknot, and MCR. The other people in the band are Bloody Mary, Vampire, Draco, Ron, although we call him Diablo now, he has black hair now with blue streaks in it, and Hagrid. Only today, Draco and Vampire were depressed, so they weren't coming, and we wrote songs instead. I knew Draco was probably slitting his wrists. He wouldn't die because he was a vampire, and the only way you can kill a vampire is with a C-R-O-S-S, -S. there's no way I'm writing that, or a steak. And Vampire was probably watching a depressing movie like The Corpse Bride. I put on a black leather shirt that showed off my boobs and tiny matching miniskirt that said Simple Plan on the butt. You might think I'm a slut, but I'm really not. We were singing a cover of Helena, and at the end of the song I suddenly burst into tears. Ebony, are you okay? Bloody Mary asked in a concerted voice. What the fuck do you think? I asked angrily, and then I said, well, Voldemort came and the fucking bastard told me to fucking kill Harry, but I don't want to kill him because he's really nice even if he did go out with Draco, but if I don't kill Harry then Voldemort will fucking kill Draco! I burst into tears. Suddenly Draco jumped out from behind a wall. Why didn't you fucking tell me? He shouted. How could you... you... you fucking poser muggle bitch! See, is that out of character? I started to cry and cry. Draco started to cry too, all sensitive. Then he ran out crying. We practiced for one more hour. Then suddenly, Dumbledore walked in angrily. His eyes were all fiery, and I knew this time it wasn't because he had a headache. What have you done? He started to cry wisely. See, that's basically nut swearing, and this time he was really upset, and you will sigh. Ebony Draco has been found in his room. He committed suicide by slitting his wrists. Chapter 11. Author's note. I said stop flaming up, preps. See if this chapter is stupid. It deals with really serious issues. Spee see for yourself if it's stupid. Zur frangs to my friend Raven for helping me. No! I screamed. I was horrified. 
Bloody Mary tried to comfort me, but I told her fuck off and I ran to my room crying myself. Dumbledore chased after me, shouting, but he had to stop when I went into my room because he would look like a perv that way. Anyway, I started crying tears of blood and then I slit both of my wrists. They got all over my clothes, so I took them off and jumped into the bath angrily while I put on a Linkin Park song at full volume. I grabbed a stake and almost stuck it into my heart to commit suicide. I was so fucking depressed. I got out of the bathtub and put on a black low-cut dress with lace all over it sandly. I put on black high heels with pink metal stuff on the ends and six pairs of skull earrings. I couldn't fucking believe it. Then I looked out the window and screamed. Snap was spying on me and he was taking a videotape of me. And Lupin was masticating to it. They were sitting on their broomsticks. Ew, you fucking perv! Stop looking at me naked! Are you pedos or what? I screamed, putting on black towel with picture of Marilyn Manson on it. Suddenly, Vampire ran in. Avracadabra! He yelled at Snape and Lupin, pointing his womb. I took my gun and shot Snape and Lupin a gazillion times, and they both started screaming, and the camera broke. Suddenly, Dumbledore ran in. Ebony, it has been revealed that someone has... No! He shouted, looking at Snape and Lupin, and then he waved his wand, and suddenly... Hagrid ran outside on his broom and said, Everyone, we need to talk. What do you know, Hargrid? You're just a little Hogwarts student. I may be a Hogwarts student, Hargrid paused angrily, but I am also a Satanist. This cannot be, Snap said in a crisp voice as blood dripped from his hand where Dumbledore's wand had shot him. There must be other factors. You don't have any, I yelled in madly. Lupin held up the camera tri-elephantly. The lens may be ruined, but the tape is still there. I felt faint, more than I normally do, like how it feels when you do not drink enough blood. Why are you doing this? Lupin said angrily while he rubbed his dirty hands on his cloak. And then I heard the words that I had heard before, but not from him. I did not know whether to feel shocked and happy or to bite him and drink his blood because I felt faint. Because... Because... Hargrid said, and he paused in the air dramatic Kit Kali, waving his wand in the air, then swooped in singing the tune of the gothic version of a song by 50 Cent. Because you're gothic, Snape asked in a little afraid voice because he was a friend and it meant he was connected with Satan. Because I love her! Chapter 12 Author's Note Stop F-A-ing, okay? Hargrid is a pedo to a lot of people in American schools are like dat. I wanted to address that issue. How do you know, Snap? He ain't Christian, plus Hargrid isn't really in love with Ebony. That was Cedric, okay? I was about to slit my wrists again with the silver knife that Drago had given me in case anything happened to him. He had told me to use it valiantly against an enemy, but I knew that we must both go together. No! I thought it was Hargrid, but it was a vampire. He started to scream. OMFG, no! My scar hurts! And then... His eyes rolled up. You could only see his red whites. I stopped. How did you know? I saw it and my scar turned back into the lightning bolt. No! I ran up closer. I thought you didn't have a scar anymore, I shouted. I do, but Diablo changed it into a pentagram for me and I always cover it up with foundation, he said back. Anyway, my scar hurt and it turned back into the lightning bolt. Save me. Then I had a vision of what was happening to Draco. Volfimort has him bondage! Anyway, I was in the school nurse's office now recovering from my slit wrists. Snap and Lupin and Hothrid were there too. They were going to St. Mango's after they recovered because they were pedophiles, and you can't have those fucking pervs teaching in a school with lots of hot girls. Dumbledore had constipated the sidio camera they took of me naked. I put my middle finger at them. Anyway, Hargrid came into my hospital bed holding a bouquet of pink roses. Enemy, I need to tell you something, he said in a V-serious voice, giving me the roses. Fuck off, I told him. You know I fucking hate the color pink anyway, and I don't like fucked up preps like you, I snapped. Hargrid had been mean to me before being gothic. No, Enemy, Hagrid says. Those are not roses. What, are they goths too, you poser prep? I asked because I was angry that he had brought me pink roses. No, you didn't, I replied. You saved me from getting a Paris Hilton put video made from your shower scene and being viewed by Snap and Lupin, who masturbated, see, is that spelled wrong? To it, he added silently. Whatever, I yelled, and girly. He pointed his wand at the pink roses. 
These aren't roses. He suddenly looked at them with an evil look in his eye and muttered, Well, if you wanted honesty, it's all you had to say. That's not a spell, that's an MCR song, I corrected him wisely. I know, I was just warming up my vocal cords. Then he screamed, Petulus Marengo mi cremisi ramasio. For all you cool gothic MCR fans out there, that is a tribute, specially for Raven, I love you girl. Emo noto okayo. And then the roses turned into a huge black flame floating in the middle of the air. And it was black. Now I knew he wasn't a prep. Okay, I believe you. Now WTF is Draco. Hair Grid rolled his eyes. I looked into the balls of flame, but I could see nothing. You see, Enneby, Dumbledore said, watching the two of us watching the flame. To see wits is the end of flames. Ha ha ha, you reviewers flames, get it? You must find yourself first, okay? I have found myself okay, you mean old man, Hargrid yelled. Dumbledore looked shocked. I guess he didn't have a headache or else he would have said something back. Hargrid stormed off into his bed. You are a liar, Prof Dumbledore. Anyway, when I got better, I went upstairs and put on black leather mini dress that was all ripped with the ends with lace on it. There was some corset stuff on the front. Then I put on black fishnets and black high-heeled boots with pictures of Billy Joel Armstrong on them. I put my hair all around me so I looked like Samara from The Ring. If you don't know who she is, you're a prep, so fuck off. And I put on blood red lipstick, black eyeliner, and black lip gloss. You look kawaii, girl, Bloody Mary said sadly. Fang, fangs, get it? You do too, I said sadly too, but I was still upset. I slit both of my wrists feeling totally depressed and I sucked all the blood. I cried again in my bathroom and put the shades on so Snap and Lupin couldn't spy on me this time. I went to some classes. Vampire was in the hair of magical creatures. He looked all depressing. He looked all depressed because Draco had disappeared and he had to be in love with Draco. He was sucking some blood from a Hufflepuff. Hi, he said in a depressed way. Hi back, I said in a wackly said way. We both looked at each other for some time. Harry had beautiful red gothic eyes so much like Draco's. Then, we jumped on each other and started screwing each other. Stop it now, you horny simpletons, shouted Professor McGoggle, who was watching us, and so was everyone else. Vampire, you fucker, I said, slapping him. Stop trying to screw me, you know I loved Draco, I shouted and then ran away angrily. Just then he started to scream. OMFG, no, my scar hurts. And then, his eyes rolled up. You could only see his red whites. No, I ran up closer. I thought you didn't have a scar anymore, I shouted. I do, but Diablo changed it into a pentagram for me and I always cover it up with foundation, he said back. Anyway, my scar hurt and then I had a vision of what was happening to Draco. Volfamort has him bondage. Special fangs to Raven, my gothic's blood sister, WTF, you're supposed to writ dis. Hey Raven, do you know where my sweater I? Chapter 13. Author's note. Raven fangs for gelpin me again. I'm sorry, I took your poster of Gerard, but that guy is such a fucking sex boom. Perhaps stop flaming gun. Vampire and I ran up the stairs looking for Dumbledore. We were so scared. Dumbledore, Dumbledore, we both yelled. Dumbledore came there. What is it that you want now, you despicable snobs? He asked angrily. Volsamort has Draco, we shouted at the same time. He laughed in an evil voice. No, don't. We need to save Draco, we begged. No, he said meanly. I don't give a darn what Voldemort does to Draco. Not after how much he misbehaved in school, especially with you, Ebony, he said while he frowned, looking at me. Besides, I never much liked him anyway. Then he walked away. Vampire started crying. My Draco, he moaned. Author's note, don't you fic gay guys are lick so hot? It's okay, I tried to tell him, but that didn't stop him. He started to cry tears of blood. Then he had a brainstorm. I had an idea, he exclaimed. I had an idea, he exclaimed. What? I asked him. You'll see, he said. He took out his wand and did a spell. Then... Suddenly, we were in Voltaport's lair. We ran in with our wands just as we heard a croon voice say, A la cadavra. It was... Voldemort... Chapter 14. Author's note, 
Fuck off, preps, okay? Raven Fangs for helping again. I'm sorry, but I couldn't update, but I was depressed and had to go to the hospital. Cause I slipped my wrists. P.S. I'm not updating till you give me 10 god reviews. Warning, some of this chapter is extremely scray. Vowered excretion it vised. We ran to where Volsamort was. It turned out that Voldemort wasn't there. Instead, the fat guy who killed Cedric was. Draco was there crying tears of blood. Snake Tail was torturing him. Vampire and I ran in front of Snake Tail. Rid my sight, you despicable preps, he shouted as we started shooting him with the gun. He, Then suddenly, he looked at me and he fell down with a lovey-dovey look in his eyes. Ebony, I love you, have sex with me, he said. In this, he is 16 years old, so he's not a pedophile, okay? Huh? I asked. Enemy, I love you, will you have sex with me? Asked Snake Tail. I started laughing crudely. What the fuck? You torture my BF and then you expect me to fuck you? God, you are so fucked up, you fucking bastard, I said angrily. Then I stabbed him in the heart. Blood poured out of it like a fountain. No! He screamed. He started screaming and running around. Then he fell down and died. I brushed into tears, sadly. Snake Tail, what art thou doing? Called Voldemort. Then... He started coming. We could hear his high heels clacking to us. So we got on our broomsticks and we flew to Hogwarts. We went to my room. Vampire went away. There I stayed, crying. What's wrong, honey? Asked Draco, taking off his clothes so we could screw. He had a sex pack. Get it? Cause he's so sexa. He had a sex pack, get it, cause he's so sexa, and a really huge you-know-what and everything. It's so unfair, I yielded. Why can't I just be ugly or plain like all the other girls and preps here except for Bloody Mary because she's not ugly or anything? Why would you want to be ugly? I don't like the preps anyways. They are such fucking sluts, answered Draco. Yeah, but everyone is in love with me, like Snape and Lupin took a video of me naked. Hargrid says he's in love with me, Vampire likes me, and now even Snake Tail is in love with me. I just want to be with you, okay, Draco? Why couldn't Satan have made me less beautiful? I shouted angrily. And don't worry, Enaby isn't a snob or anything, but a lot of people told her she's pretty. I'm good at too many things. Why can't I just be normal? It's a fucking curse! I shouted, and then I ran away. Chapter 15. Author's note. Stoop flaming, okay? BTW, you suck from no. Every time someone flams me, I'm gonna slip my wrists. Fangs to Raven for hlipping. Ebony, Ebony, shouted Draco sadly. No, please, come back. But I was too mad. Whatever, now you can go and have sex with vampire, I shouted. I stormed into my room and closed my black door with my blood red key. It had a picture of Marilyn Manson on it. He looked so sexy in a way that reminded me of Draco and Vampire. I started to cry and weep. I took a razor and started to slit my wrists. I drank the blood all depressed. Then I looked at my black GC watch and noticed it was time to go to biology class. I put on a short, ripped black gothic dress that said Anarchy on the front in blood red letters and was ripped all over and a spiky belt. Under that, I put on ripped black fishnets and boots that said Joel all over them with blood red letters. I put my ebony black hair out. Anyway, I went downstairs feeling all sad and depressed as usual. I did some advanced biology work. I was turning a bloody pentagram into a black guitar. Suddenly, the guitar turned to Draco. Enaby, I love you, he shouted sadly. I do not care what those fucker preps and posers think. You're the most beautiful girl in the world. Before I met you, I used to want to commit suicide all the time. Now I just want to fucking be with you. I fucking love you. Then, he started to sing The Chronicles of Life and Death. We considered it our song now because we fell in love when Joel was singing it. Right in front of the entire class. His singing voice was so amazing and gothic and sexy like a cross between Gerard, Joel, Chester, Pierre, and Marilyn Manson. Author's note. Don't you think those guys were so hot? If you do not know who they are, get the fuck out of here. OMFG, I said after he was finished. 
Some fucking preps stared at us, but I just stuck up my middle fingers, that were covered in black nail polish and were entwined with Draco's now, at them. I love you, I said, and then we started to kiss just like Hilary Duff, I fucking hate that bitch, and CMM in a Cinderella story. Then we went away holding hands. Lupin shouted at us, but he stopped because everyone was clapping by how sexy we looked together. Then I saw a poster saying that MCR would have a concert in Hogsmeade right then. We looked at each other all shocked, and then we went together. Chapter 16 Author's note, you know what? Sut up, okay? Prove to me your nut preps. Raven, you suck, you fucking bitch. Give me back my fucking the your super to write this. Raven, WTF, you bitch. You are supposed to dot this. BTW, fangs to Brittany5655 for touching my Japanese. We ran happily to Hogsmeade. There we saw the stage where GC had played. We ran in happily. MCR were there playing Helena. I was so fucking happy. Gerard looked even sexier than he did in the pictures. Even Draco thought so. I could totally see him getting an erection, but it didn't matter because I knew that we were the only true ones for each other. I was wearing a black leather mini dress and black leather platinum boots with red ripped fishnets. Draco was wearing a black baggy MCR t-shirt and black baggy pants. Anyway, we started moshing to Helena. We Frenched. We ran up to the front of the band to stage dive. Suddenly, Gerard pulled off his mask. So did the others. We gasped. It wasn't them at all. It was... Volsamort and the Death Dealers! WTF, Draco, I'm not going to a concert with you, I shouted angrily. Not after what happened to me last time? Even if it's MCR and you know how much I licked them. What? Cause we... You know, he gadgeted uncomfortably... Cause guys don't like to talk about you know what. Yeah, cause we you know... I yielded in an angry voice. We won't do that again, Draco promised. This time we're going with an escort. OMG, WTF, are you giving in to the mainstream? I asked. So I guess you're a prep or a Christina or what now? No, he muttered loudly. Are you becoming a prep or what? I shooted angrily. Enemy, I'm not. Please come with me. He fell down to his knees and started singing The World is Black by GC to me. I was flattened, because that's not even a single. He had memorized the lurks just for me. Okay, then I guess I will have to, I said, and then we Frenched for a while and I went up to my room. Bloody Mary was standing there. Hajima mashete, girl, she said happily. She specs Japanese, so do I. Dat men's how do you do in Japanese. BTW Willow, that fucking poser got expelled. She failed all her classes and she skipped math. Author's note, Raven, you fucking suck. Fuck you. It serves that fucking bitch right. I laughed angrily. Well, anyway, we were felling all depressed. We witched some gothic movies like Death's Nightmare Before Xmas. Maybe Willow will die too, I said. Kawaii. Bloody Mare shook her head energetically. Oh yeah, oh have a confession. After she got expelled, I murdered her and then Lupin did it with her because he's a necrophilic. Kawaii, I commented happily. We talked to each other in silence for the rest of the movie. Oh hey, BTW, I'm going to a concert with Draco tonight in Hogsmeade with MCR, I said. I need to wear the hot set outfit, Ava. Bloody Mary nodded energetically. OMFG, totally, let's go shopping. In Hot Topic, right? I asked, already getting out my special Hot Topic loyalty card. No, my head snaped up. What? My head spween. I could not believe it. Bloody Mary, are you a prep? No, she laughed. I found some cool gothic stores near Hogwarts, that's all. Who told who but them? I asked sure it would be Draco or Diabolo or Vampire. Don't even say that nom to me or me. Dumbledore, she said. Let me just call our Brahms. OMFFG Dumbledore, I asked quietly. Yeah, I saw the map for Hogsmeade on his desk, she told me. Come on, let's go. We were going in a few punk-off stores, especially for the concerts in Hogsmeade. The salesperson was 
OMG, hotter than Gerard, except not because that's impossible, and he gave me a few dresses. We only have these for the real goths. The real goths? Me and Bloody Mary asked. You wouldn't believe how many posers there are in this town, man. Yesterday, Lupin and Snap tried to buy a gothic camera pouch. He shook his head. I didn't even know they had a camera. OMFG, no, they're gonna spy on me again, I cried, running out of the changing room, wearing a long black dress with lots of red tulle coming out and very low cut with a huge slit. Oh my Satan, you have to buy that outfit, the salesperson said. Yeah, it looks totally hot, said Bloody Mary. You know what, I am gonna give it to you free, cause you look really hot in that outfit. Hey, are you gonna be at the concert tonight, he asked. Yeah, I am actually, I looked back at him. Hey, BTW, my name's Ebony Darkness Dementia Tearaway. What's yours? Tom Ridd, he said, and ran a hand through his black-dyed hair. Maybe I'll see you there tonight. Yeah, I don't think so, because I am going there with my BF Draco, you sick perv! I yelled angrily, but before he could beg me to go out with him, Hargrid flew in on his black broom, looking worried. OMFG, Ebondi, you need to get back to the castle now! Chapter 17 Author's Note I said stoop filming destroy. If you're a prep, then do not read it. You can tell whether you're a prep or not by my quiz. It's on the homepage. If you're not, then you rock. If you are, then fuck off. Please, Willow isn't Rilla a prep. Robin, please do dist promise to give back to your poster. Tom Riddle gave us some clothes and stuff for free. He said he would help us with makeup if he wanted cause he was really into fashion and stuff. He's bisexual. Hargird kept shouting at us to come back to Hogwarts. WTF Hargrid? I shouted angrily. Fuck off you fucking bastard. Well anyway, Willow came. Hargird went away angrily. Hey bitch, you look kawaii, she said. Yeah, but not as kawaii as you, I answered sadly cause Willow's really pretty and everything. She was wearing a short black corset thingy with blood red lace on it and a black blood red miniskirt, leather fishnets, and black pointy boots that showed off how pale she was. She had a really nice body with big bobs and everything. She was thin enough to be anorexic. So, are you going to the concert with Draco? She asked. Yeah, I said happily. I'm gong with Diabolo, she answered happily. Well anyway, Draco and Diabolo came. They were both walking extremely hot and sexy, and you could tell they thuffed we were ought too. Diabolo was wearing a black t-shirt that said 666 on it. He was wearing tons off makeup, just like Marilyn Manson. Draco was wearing black leather pants, a gothic black GC t-shirt, and black vans he got from Dwarped Tower. Bloody Mary was going to the concert with Dracola. Dracola used to be called Navelle, but it turns out he was kidnapped at birth and his real family were vampires. They died in a car crash. Navelle converted to Satanism and went goth. He was in Slytherin now. He was wearing goth warped t-shirt, black jeans and shoes, and black hair with red streaks in it. We call him Dracula now. Well anyway, we all went to Draco's Black Mercy Benz. Get it? Cause we're g p f i k i k that his dad Lucian gave him. We did pot, coke, and crack. Draco and I made out. We made fun of Doe's fucking preps. We got there. I gasped. Gerard was the sexiest guy, Eva. He looked even sexier than he did in pics. He had long raven black hair and piercing blue eyes. He was really skinny and had amazing ethnic voice. We moshed to Helena and some other songs. Suddenly, Gerard pulled off his mask. So did the other members. I gasped. It wasn't Gerard at all. It was an ugly, preppy man with no nose and red eyes. Everyone ran away but me and Draco. Draco and I came. It was... Vladimort and the Death Dealers. You moronic idiots! He shooted angstily. Enemy, I told you to kill Vampire. Thou have failed, and now... I shall kill thou and Draco. No, no, please, we begged sadly. But he took out his knife. Suddenly, a gothic old man flew in on his broomstick. He had long black hair and a long black bread. He was wearing a black robe that said Avril Levine on the back. He shot at a spell and Vladimort ran away. It was... Dumbledore! Chapter 18 Author's note, I said stoop flaming! 
If you do, then you're a fucking prep. Thanks to Ravenford to help and stuff. You rock. And you are not a prep. Thanks for Masuter. P.S. The other S in Dumbledore swore is cause he was trained to be gothic. So der. I woke up the next day in my coffin. I walked out of it and put on some black eyeliner, black eye shadow, blood bed lipstick, and a black really cut low leather dress that was all ripped and in stripes so you could see my belly. I was wearing a skull belly ring with black and red diamonds inside it. The night before Draco and I went back to the skull, get it skull cause I'm gothic and I like death, Dumbledore chased Voldemort away. We flew there on our brooms, mine was black and the broom stuff was blood red. There was lace all over it. Draco had a black MCR boom. We went back to our rooms and we had, you know what, to a Linkin Park song. Well anyway, I went down to the Great Hall. There, all the walls were painted black and the tables were black too. But you could see that there was pink pant underneath the black pant. And there were pastors of poser bands everywhere, like Ashley Simpson and the Backstreet Boys. WTF, I shouted, going to sit next to Bloody Mary and Willow. Bloody Mary was wearing a black leather mini with a good Charlotte t-shirt black fishnets, and black pointy boots. Willow was wearing a long gothic black dress with blood red writing that was all lacy and came up to your thighs and black boots and fishnets. Vampire, Dracula, and Draco came. We started to talk about who was sexier, Mikey or Gerard Way or Billy Joe Armstrong. The boys joined in cause they were bi. Those guys are so fucking hot, Naval was saying as suddenly a gothic old man with a black beard and everything came. He was the same one who had chased away Vladimort yesterday. He had normal tan skin but was wearing white foundation and he had dyed his hair black. Dumbledore? We all gasped. WTF? I shouted angrily. I thought he was just wearing that to scare Volsamort. Hello everyone, he said happily. As you can see, I gave the room a makeover. Wajat, do you think about it? Everyone from the poser table in Gryffindor started to cheer. Well, we goths just looked at each other, all disfusted, and shook our heads. We couldn't believe what a poser he was. BTW, you can call me Albert. He called as we left to our classes. What a fucking poser, Draco shouted angrily as we went to transformation. We were holding hands. Vampire looked really jealous. I could see him crying blood in a gothic way. Get it? Way like Gerard. But I didn't say anything. I bet he's having a midlife crisis, Willow shouted. I was so fucking angry. Chapter 19. I'm not okay, I promise. Author's note. Please stop flaming the story if you do. You're a fucking prep and you're jealous, okay? From nook, um, in, um, gong to dealt your men revows. BTW, everyone is a poor blood, so der, one, fangs to raven form the help. All day we sat angrily thinking about Dumbledore. We were so fucking pissed off. Well, I had one thing to look forward to, the MCR concert. It had been postponed, so we could all go. Anyway, I went to the common room sadly to cut classes. Draco was being all secretive. I asked what it was and he got all mad at me and started crying all hot and angsty. RNT sensitive bi guys are so hot. No one fucking understands me, he shouted angrily as his black hair went in his big blue eyes like Billy Joe in Boulevard of Borkin Dreams. He was wearing black baggy pants, a black MCR t-shirt, and a black tie. Get it? Instead of tie, cause I'm gothic. I was wearing a black leather low cut top with chains all over it and a black leather mini black high-held boots, and a cross-belly thing. My hair was all up in a messy, relly high bun like Amy Lee in Gong Under. Email me if you want to see the pic. Accuse me? What about me? I growled. Bye. But... But... He grunted. You fucking bastard! I moaned. No, wait, it's not what it fucking looks like! He shouted. But it was too late. I knew what I heard. I ran to the bathroom angrily. Kring. Draco banged on the door. I whipped and wept as my bloody eyeliner strammed down my cheeks and made cool tears down my feces like Benji in the video for girls and boys. Raven, that is so our video. I took out a cigarette and started to smoke pot. Suddenly, Hargrid came. He had appeared. You gave me a fucking shock, I shouted angrily, dropping my pot. 
WTF do you think you're doing in the girl's room? Only it wasn't just Hargrid. Somebody else was with him too. For a second I wanted it to be Tom Ridd or maybe Draco, but it was Dumbledore. Hey, I need to ask you a question, he said, pulling out his black wannabe gothic purse. What are you wearing to the concert? You know who MCR are, I gasped. No, I just saw there was a concert that a lot of goths and punks were going to, he said. Anyway, Draco has a surprise for you. Chapter 20 Author's note, I said I did not care what you think. Stuff f Fleming, okay, preps one? Fangs to Raven for to help one. Oh yeah, BTW, it'll be on vacation in Transylvania for the next three days, so do not expect updates. All day I wondered what the surprise was. Meanwhile, I pot on a black letter mini, a block corset with Erpel lace stuff all over it, a black gothic compact boots. MCR were gone to the concert again, since Volksimort had taken over the last one. I slit my wrists while I moshed to MCR in my bedroom all night, feeling excited. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door while I was trying on some black clothes and moshing to Fang for Da Venom. I got all mad and turned it of, but sacredly I hopped inside that it was Draco so we could do it again. What the fucking hell are you doing? I shouted angrily. It was Lupin! Are you gonna come rape me or what? I yelled. I was allowed to say that because Dumbledore had told us all to be careful around him and Snape since he was a pedo. No, actually. Get it, hell. Can I please borrow some condemns? He growled angrily. Yeah, so you can fuck your six-year-old girlfriend, I shouted sarcastically. Fuka, he said, gong away. Well, anyway, I put on some black eyeshadow, black eyeliner, and some black lipstick and white foundation. Then I went. Then I gasped. Snake and Lupin were in the middle of the empty hall, doing it, and Dobby was watching one. Oh my god, you ludicrous idiots, they both shooted angrily when they saw me. Dobby ran away, crying. Day got up, though. Normally, I would have been turned on. I love sing guys do it, but both of them were fucking preps. BTW Snake is mobbed to Gryffindor now. WTF, is that why you wanted condoms? I asked sadistically. See, I spelled that. Only you wouldn't give them to me, Lumpkin shouted angrily. Well, you should have told me, I replayed. You dimwit, Snake began to shoot angrily, and then... I took out my black camera and took a pic of them. You could see that they were naked and everything. Well, excuse me, they both shouted angrily. What was dat al about? It was to blackmail you, I snarked. So now next time you see me doing it with my boyfriend, you can't fucking rat me out or I'll show dis to Dumbledork. So fuck off, you bastards. I started to run. They chased me, but I threw my wound at them and they tripped over it. Well, anyway, I went outside and there was Vampire, looking extremely fucking hot. WTF, where'd Draco go? I asked him. Oh, he's being a fucking bastard. He told me he wouldn't come, Vampire said, shaking his head. You want to come with me to the concert? Then, he showed me his flying car. I gasped. It was a black car. He said his dog father, Sirius Black, had given it to him. The license plate on the front said MCR666 on it. The one on the back said Enneby on it. I gasped. We flew to the concert hall. MCR were there, playing. Vampire and I began to make out, moshing to the music. I gasped, looking at the band. I almost had an orgasm. Gerard was so fucking hot. He began to sing Helena, and his sex -a beautiful voice began to fill the hall. And then... I heard some crying. I turned and saw Draco crying in a corner. Chapter 21 Author's note, Fook you, okay? You fucking suck. It's not my fault if dispelled wrong, okay? Cause dat bitch Ravern, cause it fuck you, preps one. Whoops, saws Raven Fangs for de help. BTW Transylvania Rocks Rad one. I even got to go to the castle where Dracula was filmed. Later, we all went in the skull. Draco was crying in the common room. 
Draco, are you okay? I asked in a gothic voice. No, I'm not, you fucking bitch! He shouted angrily. He stated to run out of the place in a suicidal way. I stated to cry, because I was afraid he would commit suicide. It's okay, Annaby, said Vampire comfortably. I'll make him feel better. You mean you'll go fuck him, want you? I shouted angrily. Then I ran to get Draco. Vampire came too. Draco, please come! He began to cry. Tears of blood came down his pale face. I was so turned on because I love sensitive bi guys. If you're a homophone, then fuck of. And then... We heard some footsteps. Vampire got out his black invincibility coke. We both got under it. We saw the janitor, Mr. Norris, there, shouting angrily with a flashlight in his hand. Who's there? He shouted angrily. We saw filth come. He went under the invisibility cloak and started to meow loudly. Is anyone there? yelled Mr. Norris. No, fuck you, preppy little poser, son of a fucking bitch, Vampire said under his breast in a disgusted way. Excuse me, excuse me, who said dat? yelled Mr. Norris. Then he heard Filch meow. Filth, is there anyone under the cloak? he asked. Filth nodded, and then... Vampire Frenched me. He did it just as... Mr. Norris was taking of the cloak one. What the? He yelled, but it was too late because now we were ruining away from him. And then we saw Draco crying and busting into tears and slitting his wrists outside of the school. Draco, I cried. Are you okay? I guess though, Draco weeped. We went back to our coffins, Frenching each other. Draco and I decided to watch Lake Placid, see isn't da depressing, on the gothic red bed together. As I was about to put in the video, my eyes rolled up and suddenly I had a vision of something that was happening now. There was a knock on the door, and Fug and the Ministry of Magic walked into the school one. Chapter 22 Author's note, STFU! Prep stoop flaming, okay? If you do not lick it, fuck of I in no, it's Mr. Norris. It's Raven's fault, okay? One one, you suck. One no, just kidding, Raven. You fucking rock. Prep suck one. All day, everyone talked about the misery of magic. Well, anyway, I woke up the next day. I was in my coffin, so I opened the door. I was wearing black lacy leather pajamas. Then I gasped, standing in front of me, where? B, Luddy Mary, Vampire, Diabolo, Draco, Dracula, and Willow. I opened my crimson eyes. Willow was wearing a tight black leather top with pictures of bloody roses all over it. Under that, she wore a black poofy skirt with lace and a black gothic boots that was attached to the top. Vampire was wearing a baggy simple plan t-shirt and baggy black pants and vans. Draco was wearing a black MCR t-shirt and black jeans and a leather jacket. He looked like he Gerard Way and almost as fucking sexy. Vampire looked like Joel Madden. Bloody Mary was wearing a tight black poofy gothic dress that she had ripped so it showed off all her clearage with a white apron that said bitch and other swear words and MCR lyrics on it kind of like the one dress I had seen Amy Lee wear once. Darkness who is Jenny, was there too. She was weaving a ripped gothic black dress with ripped stuff all over it and a laced up top thing and black pointy boots. So were Crab and Goyle. It turns out that Darkness, Diabolo, Crab, and Goyle's dad was a vampire. He committed suicide by slitting his wrist with a razor. He had raped them and stuff before too. They all got so depressed that they became gothic and converted to Satanism. OMFG, I yielded as I jumped up. What the fuck are you all... Why the fuck are you all here? Enemy, something is really fucked up, Draco said. Okay, but I need to put my fucking clothes on first, I shouted angrily. It's alright. We have to go now, and you look kawaii anyway. You're so fucking beautiful, Draco said in a sexy voice. Oh, alright, I said smiling. But you have to tell me why you're all being erective. I will, I will, he said. So I just put on some black eyeliner, black lipstick, and red eyeshadow, and white foundation. Then I came. We all went outside the great hall and looked in from a window. A fucking prep called Brittany from Gryffindor was standing next to us. She was wearing a pink mini and a Hilary Duff t-shirt, so we put up our middle fingers at her. Inside the great hall, we could see Dumbledore. Cornelia Fudged was there, shouting at Dumbledore. Doris Rumbridge was there, too. 
This cannot be, she shouted angrily. The school must be closed. The Bark Lord is planning to kill the students, yelled Cornelia Fudge. You are not fit to be the principal any longer, yelled Rumbridge. You are too old and your Alzheimer's is dangerous. You must retry or Voldemort will kill your students. Very well, Dumbledore said angrily, but we cannot do this. We can't close the school. There is only one person who is capable of killing Voldemort, and she is in the school, and her name is... Enony Darkness Dementia Ravenway. Draco, Crab, Goyle, Darkness, Willow, Vampire, and Bloody Mary looked at each other. I gasped. Chapter 23 Author's note Dudes to fuck up bitches 1. You are just jellos cause I got 10,000 reviews 1. Fangs to Raven for to help and tell me about the books girl rock let's go shopping together The door opened and Professor Rumbridge and Cornelia Fudge stomped out angrily Then Dumbledum and Rumbridge sought us Mr. Way what the beep are you doing? Rumbridge shouted angrily. Dumbledore blared at her. Oops, she made a mistake, he corrupted her. She means hi, everybody, come in. We all came in angrily. So did all of the other students. I sat between Darkness and Draco, and opposite Bloody Mary. Mr. Crab and Goyle started to make some morbid jokes. They both looked exactly like Ville Volo. I ate some Count Chocula and drank some blood from a cup. Then I heard someone shooting angrily. I looked behind me, it was... Vampire! He and Draco were shooting at each other. Vampire, Draco, WTF? I asked. You fucking bustard! Yelled Draco at Vampire. I want to shit next to her, one. No, I do! Shouted. No, she doesn't fucking like you, you son of a bitch! Yelled Draco. No, fuck you, motherfucker, she loves me, not you! Shouted Vampire. And then... He jumped on Draco. No, not in that way, you perv. They started to fight and beat up each other. Dumbledore yelled at them, but they didn't stop. All of a sudden, a terrible man with red eyes and no nose flew in on his broomstick. He had no nose and was wearing a gray robe. All the glass in the window he flew through fell apart. Brittany, that fucking prep, started to cry. Vampire and Draco stopped fighting. I stopped eating. Everyone gasped. The room fell sirened. Volzemort! Eh, Bobby. Ebony! Darth Valor said evilly in his raspy voice. Thou hast failed your mission. Now I shall kill thou, and I shall kill Vampire as well. If thou dost not kill him before, then I shall kill Draco too. Please don't make me kill him, please, I begged. No! He laughed crudely. Kill him or I shall take him anyway. Then he flew away, cackling. I bust into tears. Draco and Vampire came to contort me. Suddenly my eyes rolled up so they looked all cool and gothic. I had a vision where I saw some lightning flash and then Voldremont coming to kill Draco while Draco slit his wrists in a depressed way. No! I screamed sexily. Suddenly I locked up and stopped having the vision. Ebony! Ebony! Ara, you alright? Asked Draco in a worried voice. Yeah, yeah, I said sadly as I got up. Everything's all right, Enneby, said Vampire, all sensitive. No, it's not, I shouted angrily. Tears of blood went down my face. OMFG, what if I'm getting possessed like in the ring too? It's okay, girl, said Bloody Mary. Maybe you should ask Professor Sinister about what the visions mean, though. Okay, bitch, I said sadly, and then we went. Chapter 24 Author's Note Prep stip flaming the story you're just jealous so fuck you okay go to hell one one raven fags for de help. Well we had deviation next so I got to ask Professor Trevelry about the visions. Konnichiwa everybody come in said Professor Sinister in Japanese. She smelled at me with her gothic black lipstick. She's the coolest fucking teacher ever. She had long dead black hair with blood red tips and red eyes. Her mom was a vampire. She's also half Japanese so she speaks it in everything. She's Bloody Mary get along great. 
She's really young for a teacher. Today, she was wearing a black leather top with red lace and a long, gothic, black ripped dress. We went inside the black classroom with pastors of Emily the Strong. I raced my hand. I was wearing some black nail polish with red pentagrams on it. What is it, Ebony? She asked. Hey, I love your nail polish. Where'd you get it, Hot Topic? Yeah, I answered. All the preps who didn't know what HT was gave me weird looks. I gave them the middle finger. Well, I have to talk to you about some things. When do you want to do it? How about now? She asked. Okay, I said. Okay, class, fucking dismissed everyone, Professor Trevelry said she let everyone go. Except for you, Brittany. She pointed at Brittany and some other preps. Please do exercise, get it, one on page three. Okay, I'm having lots of visions, I said in a worried voice. I'm so worried Draco is gong to die. Well, she gave me a black crystal ball to look in. I looked at it. What do you see? She asked. I said I see a black gothic skull and a pentagram. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I looked at it. It was Draco. He was looking really sexy wearing a black leather facet, a black gothic Linkin Park t-shirt, and black Congress shoes. Okay, you can go now. See ya, cunt, said Professor Sinister. Bye, bitch, I said waving. I went to Draco, and Vampire was sitting next to him. We both followed Draco together, and I was so exhibited. Chapter 25 Author's note, Stop flaming, okay? If you do not, then ill tell Justin to bet you up. 1111 And ill tell Al de Nreds to put Verters in your computer. 1111111111111111 Fuck you, one. Raven Fangs for to help, one. I was so excited. I fellow Draco wondering if we were going to do it again. We went outside, and then we went into Draco's black car. Ebony, what the fuck did Professor Trevelry say? Whispered Draco, potting his gothic wit hand with black nail polish on mine. She said she would tell me what the visions meant tomorrow, I grumbled in a sexy voice. He took out a heroin cabaret and spiked it, then gave it to me to spork. He started to fly the car into a tree. We went to the top of it. Draco put on some MCR. And all the things that you never ever told me And all the smiles that are ever gonna haunt me Sang Gerard's sexy voice. We started tiling of each other's clubs fervently. He took my black thong and my black leather bar. I took of his black boxers. Then... He put his trobbing you-know-what in my tool sexily. OMFG! Draco! Draco! I screamed having an orgism. We stated Frenching passively. Suddenly... I fell asleep. I started having a dream. In it, a black guy was shooting two gothic men with long black hair. No, please, don't fucking kill us, one, they pleaded, but he just kept shooting them. He ran away in a red car. No, oh my fucking god, one, one, I shouted in a scared voice. Ebony, what's wrong? Draco asked me as I woke up, opening my icy blue eyes. I started to cry, and tears of blood went down my face. I told Draco to call Vampire. He did it with his black Lincoln Park mobile. But the worst thing was who the people who were shot in the dream were. Lucian and Sirius 111. Chapter 26. Author's note. Prep, stoop flaming st story. Okay, one. If you did not like the story, then go fuck yourself, you fucking prep. You suck, 111. Oh, why? And I wasn't being racist, okay, 11. A few mutates later. Vampire came to the tree. He was wearing a black leather jackson, black leather pants, and a good shroud t-shirt. Hi, vampire, I said flirtily as I started to sob. Draco hugged me sexily, try not to come fraught me. I started to cry tears of blood, and then told them what happened. Oh, fuck it, vampire shouted angrily. He force started to cry sadly. What fucking dick did that? I don't know, I said. Now come on, we have to tell Dumbledore. We ran out of the tree and into the castle. Dumbledore was sitting in his office. Sire, our dads have been shot, Draco said while we wiped some tears from his white face. Enneby had a vision in a dream. Dumbledore started to cockle. <laughs> and how do you expect me to know Ebony's not divisional? I glared at Dumbledore. Look, motherfucker, he said angrily as Dumbledore gasped. See, is that toot of character? You know very well that I'm not decisional. 
Now get some fucking people out there to look for Ceres and Lucian. Pornto! Okay, he said in an intimated voice. Where are they? I thought about it, then all of a sudden. Longden, I said. I told him which street. He went and called some people and did some stuff. After a few mistunes, he came back and said people were out looking for them. After a while, somebody called him again. He said that they had been found. Draco, Vampire, and I all left to our rooms together. I went with Draco to wait in the nurse's office while the vampire went to slit his wrists in his room. We looked at each other's gothic, derpursed eyes. Then we kissed. Suddenly, Sirius and Lucian came in on stretchers. And Professor Sinister was behind them, one. Chapter 27. Vampires will never hurt you. Author's note. You know what, 111. I do not give a fuck what you preps think about me, 1111. So stip flaming to fucking story, bitches, 1111. Thanks to Raven for your love in sport and help in I love you girl cause sauce. I caught an update. I was loud, really depressed, and I slipped my wrist. I had to go to the hospital. Ru Raven, you rock girl, 1111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111
I took off Draco's MCR shrift and seductively took of his pants. He was hung like a Stallone. He had replaced the vampire tattoo that said Enemy on it. Black roses were around it. I gasped. He looked exactly like Gerard Way. Vampire took a Vito camera. I had said it was okay before. I took of my clothes, then we were in for de rid of our life. We started fretching as we climbed into the coffin. He put his Spock in my you-know-what, and passively, we did it. I love you, Ebaby. Oh, let me feel you. I need to feel you, he screamed as we got an orgasm. He watched Vampire filmed everything perfectly. Suddenly, What the fuck are you doing? It was... Snope and Professor McGoggle 111. Chapter 29. Author's note, sot das fuck up, 1-1. You're just jealous cause you're prepped, so fuck you, 1-1-1-1. Raven, you rock, girl, fangs for da help, MCR rock, 666-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
I thought of the time when we screwed and the time I did it with Draco and Dumbledore came and the tame when Draco almost committed suicide and Vampire was so sportive. Snipe laughed angrily. He started to pray to Volksamort. He started to do an incapacitation dancing around the stokes, whipping Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, an idea I had. I closed my eyes, and using my vampire powers, I sent a telepathic message to Draco and Vampire so they would destruct Snape. Dumbledork will get you, Draco shouted. Yeah, just wait until the mystery found out, Vampire yelled. Meanwhile, I took out my wand. You ridiculous dunderherd, Snoop yielded. He took off all of Draco's clothes, just as he was about to rape him. Crocio! I shitted, pointing my wound. Snoop screamed and started running around the room screaming. Meanwhile, I grabbed my black mobile and sent a sixth to Sirius. I stopped doing Crucio. You dunderhead, I'm going to kill, shooted Snape, but suddenly Cerberus came. Snake put the whip behind his back. Oh, hello, Sev. I was just teaching them something, he lied. But suddenly Lucian and Professor Trevelry came into the room, and they and Sirius unlocked the chains and put them around Snap. Then Professor Trevelry said, Come on, Ebony, let's go. Chapter 31 Author's note, I said shut the fuck up, you quiffs! Stop Kaelin, Ebony, a Mary Sue, so okay you do not you know what's going to happen, okay? So fuck you, thanks to my BFF Raven for D help. I always knew you were on Voldemort's side, you son of a bitka. Buffy rocks, Sirius said to Snape. No, I'm not. I was teaching them something. Snap clammed. Oh fucking yeah? I took some black Volmesser to serum out of my pocket and gave it to Cerberus. He made Snap dunk it. He did Arngurly. Then Lucius took out a tape recorder and started playing it while he did curses on Snap. Then Professor Sinister and Lucian made us get out with them while Snape told his secrets. Lucian took Vampur and Draco to the nurse after thanking me a million times. Professor Trevelry took me to a dark room. Now I was going to go back in time to Sadaus Volksamort. Moving posters of MCR and Ravana were all over. Hermione, Darkness, and Willow came too. Bloody Mary gave me a black bag from Tom Ridd's store. What's in the bag? I asked Professor Trevelry. You will see, she said. I opened the bag. It was a sexy, tight, low smut, black leather gothic dress. It had a red corset stuff and there was a slit up the leg. I put it on. My friends helped me put on the black fishnets and black pointy boots Willow had chosen. Willow and Darkness helped me put on black eyeliner and blood red lipstick. You look fucking kawaii, bitch, Bloody Mary said. Fangs, I said. Okay, now you're going to go back in Tim, said Professor Sinister. You will have to do it in a few sessions. She gave me a black gun. I put it in a strap on my fishnets like in Resdenet Evil. Then she gave me a black time turner. After an hour, use the time turner to come back here, Professor Trevelry said. Then she and Bloody Mary put a pensive in front of me. Everyone went in front of it. Good Luke, everyone shooted. Darkness and Willow gave me death's touch sin. Then, I jumped sexily into the pensive. Suddenly, I was in front of to school. In front of me was one of the sexiest guys I had ever seen. He was wearing long black hair, kind of like Mikey Way, only black. He had gren eyes like Billy Joe Armstrong and pale wit skin. He was wearing a black ripped up suit with vans. It was Tom Bombadil. Chapter 32. Author's note, I said stop for flaming. I know his name isn't Tom Bodil. That was a mistake. If you do not like the story, then you can go screw yourself. You suck. Hi, I said flirtily. Im Enneby Way, the new student. I shock my pale hands with their black royal polish with him. The name's Tom, he said, but you can call me Satan. That's my middle name. We shock hands. Well, come on, we have to go upstairs, Satan said. I followed him. Hey, Satan, do you happen to be a fan of Grande? Since MCR and Evanescence don't exist yet, then, I asked. Oh my fucking god, how did you know? Satan gasped. Actually, I like GC a lot, too. Get it? Because GC did that song, I Just Wanna Live, that's sounded really 80s. OMG, me too, I replied happily. Guess what? They have a concert in Hogsmeade, Satan whispered. Hogsmeade? I asked. 
Yeah, that's what they used to call it in these times before it became Hogsmeade in 2000, he told me all secretively. And there's a really cool shop called Hot... Topic! I finished, happy again. He frowned confusedly. No, it's called Hot Issue. He smiled, skvft, again. Then in 1988, they changed it to Hot Topic. Oh, now everything was making sense for me. So is Dumbledore your Prince of Pill? I shouted. Uh-huh. He looked at his black nails. Im in Slytherin. OMFG, shmi too! I shrieked. You go to the skull? Get it because I'm gothic? He asked. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm new. I smelled happily. Suddenly, Dumbledore flew in on his broomstick and started shredding at us angrily. No talking in the halls! He had short blonde hair and was wearing a polo short from American Ogle Outfters. Stupid goths! Satan rolled his eyes. His is so mean to us goths and punks just because we're in Slytherins and we're not preps. I turned around angrily. Actually, I think maybe it's because you're the Bark Lord. WTF? He asked angrily. Oh, nothing, I said sweetly. Then suddenly... The floor opened. OMFG, no! I screamed as I feel down. Everyone looked at me weirdly. Hey, where are you going? Satan asked as I fell. I got out of the hole and it was back in the pensive in Professor Trevelry's classroom. Dumbly Dumb was there. Dumbledore, I think I just met you, I said. Oh yeah, I remember that, Dumbledore said, trying to be all gothic. Sinister came in. Hey, this is my classroom. Wait, WTF, Annabi, what the hell are you doing? Um, I looked at her. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. WTH, how? I screamed, forgetting she was a teacher for a second. But she's a goth, so it's okay. Professor Sinster looked sad. Um, I was drinking Voldemort serum. She started to cry black tears of depression. Dumbly Dumb didn't know about them. Hey, are you crying tears of blood? He asked curiously, touching a tear. Fuck off, we both said, and Dumbly Dum took his hand away. Professor Sinster started crying again in her chair, sobbing limpid tears. OMFG, Annabi, I think I'm addicted to Voldemort serum. Author's note, see you fucking preps, go fuck yourself, that's serious issue 20, go to hell. Chapter 33 Author's note, I said shut up, it's not my fault, okay? If you don't like the story, then you're a prep, so fuck you, flamers. P.S. I'm not updating up till you give me five god reviews. And this Tim, I meant it. You suck. Thanks, Raven, for the help. It'll promise to help you with your story lols. Oh my fucking god, I shooted sadly. Should we get you to St. Magna's, bitch? Hell no, she said. Listen, Egigi, I need your help. Next time you go back in Tim, you do think you could ask Tom Anderson for some help? Sure, I said sadly. I went outside the door. Draco was there. He was wearing a big black GC t-shirt, which was his Panama's. Hey, sexy, I said. How'd it go, Enneby? He asked and his voice was so sexy and low, kind of like Gerard Way when he's talking. Fine, I responded. We stared to go back into the dorm. How far did you go with Satan? Draco asked jealously. Not too far, lol, I borked. Will you have to do it with him? Draco asked angstily. I hop not too far, I shouted angrily. Then I felt bad for shooting at him. I said sorry. We Frenched. What happened to Snipe? I growled. You will see, Draco giggled mistressly. He opened a door. Snap and Lumpkin was there. Sirius was packering them by staging them with a black knife. No, please! Lumpkin bagged as Sirius started to suck his blood. I laughed statistically. I talked some photons of him and Snap being torqued. Okay, I know this is men, but I think about it, people. They are pedos in Snake Chab to rap them and new as sadists rock. Has anyone seen Shrek th Attack 3 lols? We took some of Snipe's blood, then Draco and I went back to our rooms. We sat on my gothic black coffin. My clothes were kinda dritty, so I put on a black leather outfit thingy kinda like the one 
Suzel has in Underworld. If you haven't heard of it, then fuck you. I put on some black platform high heels. Darko put on Desolation Livers by MCR. Den. We started to take of each other's clothes. I talk off his shit and he had a six pack. Lols. We started to mac out lick in the grudge. He pot his wetness in my you know what sexily. I gut an orgy. Oh Draco. Oh me fucking good Draco. I screamed passively as he got an eructation. I love you to Avery, he whispered sexily, and then we fell asp sleep, lol. Chapter 34 Author's note, shot the folk up preps! Have you even read the story? You are probably all, all just preps and posters, so fuck you! Fangs to Raven for the help. I woke up in the coffin the next day. Draco was gone. I got up and put on a black, tight sex dress that was all ripped at the end. There was red corset stuff going up the front and the back, and it came up to my knees. There was a slit in the dress, like in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I pot on ripped black fishnets and black stilton boots. Suddenly, Sorius cocked on the door. I opened it. Hi, Iboni, he said. Guess what? You have to come to Professor Sinster's office. Okay, I said in a depressed voice. I had wanted to fook Draco, or maybe lessen to MCR or Evanescence. I came anyway. So what the fuck happened to Snipe and Lupin? I asked Sorius flirtily. I fucking tortured them, he answered in a statistic way. They are in Azkabhazian now, lol. I laughed evilly. Where are Draco and Vampira? I muttered. They are excused from school today, sodomized moaned sexily. Right now, they are watching the Nichtmare before Xmas. We went into the office. Professor Sinister was there. She was wearing a gothic black dress that was ripped all over it, kind of like the one Amy Lee wears in this pic. Parentheses, HTTP, slash, she was drinking some Volix Marcerum. She took out the pen sieve and the time torner. Anna B, you will have to do another session now. Also, I need you to get me to cure for being addicted, she said sadly. Good luck, fangs! And then, I jumped into the pinaceve again. Suddenly I looked around. I was in the Great Hall, eating Count Chorcula. It was morning. I was sitting next to Satan. On a table was a tall, gothic man with long, black hair, pale skin, and blue eyes, wearing a suit and black Croneverse shoes. He looked just like Charlin Manson. I noticed. He was drinking a portent. Who's he? I asked. Oh, that's Professor Slutborn, Satan said. He's the portent's teacher. Ebony? Yeah? I asked. Did you know that Marilyn Manson is playing in Hogsmeade tonight? And they are showing the exercise at the movies before that. Yeah? Well, want to go to the contort and the movie with me? Chapter 35 Ghost of You Author's note, fangs to Susie for the idea, you rock, fuck off you preps, fangs to Raven for the help, you rock girl, p.s. I'm gong and destroy real son, so fuck you, oh yeah, and if you know any gothic names, please tell me cause I need one for serious fangs. I went into the con men room, thinking of Satan, suddenly I gasped. Draco was there. I grasped. He locked as hut as Ava wearing black leather pants, a black Lonkin Prack t shirt, and black eyeliner. Draco, what the fuck are you dong? I gasped. Huh? He asked. Then I remembered. It wasn't Draco. It was Lucan. He still had two arms. Oh, hi, Lucian, I said. I'm Ebony, the new student. Lol, we shook hands. Yeah, Satan told me about you, Lucian said. He pinted to a group of sexy gothic guys. They were siding in a corner and cutting. It was serious. Vampire's dad and... Snap! All of them were wearing black eyeliner and black good shroulet band shirts. Listen, I'm in a goth band with those guys, he said. We're playing tonight at the Marilyn Manson show as backup. Oh, really? I asked. Yeah he said. We're called X Black X Tier X, 
I play the guitar. Spartacus plays the drums, he said, pointing to him. Snap plays the boss, and Jams plays the guitar to even foe we call him Samaro after Samara in the ring. Hey bastards, I told them they gave me Death's Touch Sin. Suddenly I gasped again. But don't you have a lead singer? I asked. Lucian looked down sadly. We used to, but she did. She contemplated suicide by sliding her wrists. Oh my fucking god, that's so fucking sad, I gasped. It's okay, but we need a new lead snigger, Samaro said. Well, I said I'm in a banad myself. Really? Asked Snap. Really? Asked Snap. I couldn't believe it. He used to be gothic. Yeah, we're called Bloody Gothic Rose 666. Do you want to HR me sing? Yeah, said everyone. So the guys talk out their guitars. They began to pay a song by Get It Cause By Guys Are So Sexa, Gernday. I walk this empty street on the boulevard of broken drems. I sang sexily. I did not own the lyrics to that song. Everyone gasped. Enopby, will you join the band? Please, begged Lucian, Samoro, Sirius, and Snap. Um, okay, I shrugged. Are we going to play tonight? Yeah, they said. Okay, I said, but I knew that I had to get a new outfit. I walked outside, wondering how I could go forward in time. Suddenly, someone jumped in front of me. It was... Morty McFly! He was wearing a black band t-shirt and black baggy jeans. What the hell are you dong here? I asked. I will help you go forward in Tim, Annaby, he said seriously. Then, he took out a black Tim machine. I went into it and... Suddenly, I was forward in Tim! Chapter 36 Author's note, I said stop flaming, okay? I bet you are all probably year old, 70 year old. P.S. Porter says you're a prep. Oh, yeah, and thanks to Raven for the help. Have fun in England, girl. I loped around in a depressed way. Suddenly, I saw Professor Sinister, Bloody Mary, Socrates, and Draco, Vampire, and Willow were there too. OMFG, Sorius, I saw you, and Samaro, and Snip, and everyone. I can't believe Snap used to be gothic. Yeah, I know, Sirius said sadly. Oh, hey there, bitch, Professor Trevelry said in an emo voice, drinking some Voldemort's trump. Hi, fucker, I said. Listen, Satan asked me out to a gothic cornet and a movie, so I need a sex and new outfit for the date. Also, I'm playing in a gothic band, so I need an outfit for that too. Oh my Satan! Get it, lol, cause she's gothic, gasped Bloody Mary. Want to go to Hot Topic to shop for your outfit? OMFS, let's have a group cutting session, said Professor Trevelry. I can't fucking wait for that, but we need to get some stuff first, said Willow. Yeah, we need some potions for Professor Trevelry so she won't be addicted to Voldemort's serum anymore, and also some love potion for Enevy. Darko said, resultantly. Well, we have potions class now, Willow said, so let's go. We went sexily to potions class, but Snape wasn't there. Instead, there was... Cornelio Fuck! Hey, where the fuck is Dumbledore? Draco shouted angrily. Shut the fuck up, shooted Cornelia Fuck. He is in Azkabian now with Snape and Lupin, and he is old and weak, he has cancer. Now do your work! My friends and I talked angrily. Can you believe Snap used to be gothic? Vampire asked, surprisedly. That's it, Cornelia fuck shooted angrily. I'm getting Professor Bridge! He stomped out angrily. Me friends and I began talking again. I began to drink some blood mixed with beer. Suddenly I saw Hargrid into cupboard. WTF is he doing? I asked. Then I looked at Draco. He was wearing tons of eyeliner, and he locked sexier than Eva. Suddenly, Hargriff, what the fuck are you doing? He shouted. I looked around. Hairgrid was putting something in my glass of blood. Darko and Vampire started to beat him up sexily. God, you're such a pauser! I shouted at Hairgrid. Suddenly, I looked at what he was putting in the blood. It was amnesia potion. Chapter 37 Author's note, 
Okay, everybody, I'm going on vocation on the 1st of July, so I'm either gonna end the fic or update it in a week's fangirls. Oh, and yeah, and prep stop flaming the story. Raven Fangs for to help see a girl after vocation. Darko's point of view, lol. Vampire and I chanted Hairgrid to the floor. Oh me fucking Satan, Annabee said. She was so hot. Maybe I could ooze amnesia potion to make Satan fall in love with me faster. But you are so sexy and wonderful anyway, Tata, said Vampire. Why would you need it? To make everything go faster, lol, said Enneby. But you won't have to do it with him or anything, will you? I asked jealously. OMFG, you guys are so scary, said Brittany, a fucking prep. Shut the fuck up, said Willow. Okay, well, anyway, let's go to Professor Trevelry's room. Draco, Ebery, and I went to Professor Sinister's room, but Professor Sinister wasn't there. Instead, Tom Ridd was. Oh, hi, fuckers, he said. Listen, I got some cool new cloves. I took out the cloves from the bag. It was gothic leather miniskirt that said 666 on the back, black stilton boots, blood red fishnets, and a black corset. OMG, fang! OMG, fangs, I said, hugging him in a gothic way. I took the clothes in the bag. Okay, Professor Sinister isn't her. What the fuck should we do? Asked Draco. Suddenly, he locked at a sign on the black wall. Oh my fucking Satan! I screamed as I read it. On it said everyone Professor Sinister is away. She is too gothic. She is in Azkabian now. Classes shall be taught by Double Dork, who is back, but he shall not be principal for now. Sincerely, Professor Rumbridge. OMFG! I shouted angrily. How could they do that? Suddenly, Dubbledore came in. What the hell are you dong in my oafus? He began to shoot angrily. Suddenly, I saw Morty McFly's Black and Tim machine. I jumped seductively into it, leaving Draco and Vampire. Suddenly, I was back in Tim. I looked around. It was... Professor Slutborn's Ephus. I sneaked around. Suddenly, I saw the amnesia potion on his desk. It was black with blood-red pentagrams on it. It was the shape of a cross. I put it in my pocket. Suddenly, the door opened, and it was... Professor Slutgorn! OMG, what are you doing, Fuka? He shouted angrily. I don't know. What the fuck are you doing? I shouted angrily. Oh, sorry, I was just looking around because I thought it was class, you said, finally hoping he couldn't see the potion in your pocket. Oh, okay, you can go now, said Professor Slutborn. You went to the con men room after putting on my clothes. Silas, Sam Arrow, and Snap were there, practicing Vampires Will Never Hurt You by MCR. Oh, hi, you guys, I said seductively. Where's Satan? Oh, he's coming, said Sirius. BTW, you can call me Hades now. Suddenly, Satan came. He was wearing a smexy black leather Jackson, black Congress shoes, a slipknot t-shirt, and a black tie. Okay, I will see you guys at the concert, I said, and then I went with Satan. Chapter 38 Author note, what does everyone think if I end a story and then add some more to it after vocation? Oh yeah, Asnid's preps, stoop flaming, if you do not like that story, then take my quiz, okay? Then you will see if you're gothic or not. Satan and I walked to his car. It was a black car with pentagrams all over it. On the license plate said 666, just licked Draco's car. I went in it seductively. Stan started to drive it. We talked about Satanism. Lol, he was named after Satan. Nutting, music, and being gothic. Oh my Satan, Gerard is so fucking hot. Oh my Satan, Gerard is so fucking hot. Volksmort agreed as we smoked some weed. Cause bye guys are so hot, they are so sensitive. I love them. LOL goes fucks a bye guy. LOL, I totally decided to not commit suicide when I heard Helena, I said in a flirty voice. Hey Satan, do you know the cure for when people are addicted to Volksmort serum? Well, he thought, I think you have to drink vampire blood. Suddenly, Volksmort parked the car behind a black movie theater. Satan and I walked outside. We went into the movie Tether, where they showing The Exorcist. In it, a boy and a girl were doing it. Suddenly, a serial killer came. LOL. Satan and I laughed at the blood cause we're sadists. 
While Satan was watching the movie, I had an idea. I took Satan's gothic black nightmare before Christmas cigar sexily from his pocket and put some amnesia potion in it. I put it back in his black Emile Estrange bag. Satan turned around and started to smoke it. Black clouds with red pentagrams into them started to fly around everywhere. OMG, Satan said, jumping up. I gasped because I was afraid he'd noticed. Annabee, guess what? I knew that the amnesia had worked. Amnesia potion has not yet been invented, so it will not work, he said. Too bad, because I wanted to use some on you. Cool, I raised my eye suggestingly. And then? He talk off my club sexily, and we started to make out. I talk off his shit. He had six-pack just for, like, Gerard Way. We Frenched. Excuse me, but you are going to have to leave, shooted the lady behind us. She was a prep. Fuck you, I said. Suddenly, I attacked her, soaking all her blood. No, she screamed. All the preps in the theater screamed, but everyone else crapped because Satan and I locked so cute together. Satan and I started to walk outside. So, MG, how did you do that? Voldemort asked in a turned on voice. I'm a vampire, I said as we went into the car. Seriously? he gasped. Yeah, seriously, I said, drinking some beer. Satan started to drive the car. I smelled happily. It's too bad we didn't get to see the rest of the movie, don't you think? Yeah, I said as we kized passively. Satan parked in a black driveway next to the place where Draco and I had watched GC for the first time. We went inside where Marilyn Manson was playing and started to mosh, lol. Anti people, now you've gone too far, Jesus Christ superstar, screamed Marilyn on the stage. We did the devil fingers. I started to dance really close to Satan. He was so schmeckase. He looked at me all emo with his gothic red eyes and he looked exactly like Mikey Way. I almost got an orgasm. Suddenly Marilyn Manson stopped singing. I would like to peasant. X black X tear X. He said. I ran on stage. Lucian, Samaro, Snap, and Hades were there. They started to play their instillments. I got on stag. Well, if you want it, honesty, that's all you had to say, I sang. I did not own the lyrics to that song. My voice sounded like a pentagram between Amy Lee and a girl version of Gerard Woy. Everyone clapped. Satan got an erucation. I'm not okay, I sang finale. Suddenly, Lucian started playing the song wrong by Mustack. OMFG, yielded James. What the fuck? Whoops, I'm sorry, said Lucian. You fucking asshole, James shouted angrily. You guys are such preps, Snap said. Come on, it was a mistake. Yeah, it's not his fault, said Sirius. No, he ruined the fucking song, yelled Samaro. You guys, stop, I showed angrily, but it was too late. They all began to fight. Suddenly, Samaro took out his niff. OMFG, no, shouted Lucan, but it was too late. James tried to shoot off his arm. And then, I jumped sexily in front of the bullet. No, yielded everyone, but it was too late. Suddenly, everything went black. Chapter 39. I am a trolling genius. LOL. Disclaimer, I do not own the HP series, and I am not the real XXX Bloody Wrists 666XXX. Author's note, I am an extremely immature, pathetic idiot girl, I know. Out of boredom, I crack this girl's passy for fun, and it took less than eight minutes to do it too, and will probably get in a shitload of trouble, which I probably deserve because I'm being a troll right now. Meh. And I present to you my crappy part in the story. And take note, I haven't even finished reading this fic yet, but instead skip over to Skim Chapter 38. Flame, laugh, do whatever you want, preps. I... The American retail-wearing British vampire, Sue, coughed up blood. Satan kneeled down beside me. No, don't die! I gave him a rueful smile. I'm sorry, it's something I had to do. To fulfill my duty as the noble, gothic Mary Sue. Satan sobbed. I love you, Ebony. <laughs> I love you too. I'll... I'll see you in hell, I mumbled, already finding my surroundings fading to black. Bloody Mary Smith suddenly popped into the room for no apparent reason. She frowned when she realized the room was oddly quiet, but at the sight of Ebony's lifeless body, she screamed. 
Her face became pale with horror. She screamed for the healers, Dumbledore, McGoogle, and every single gothic person she could think of. Suddenly, a glow started to surround the body of Ebony. Everyone stared in shock. Her body started to lift ever so slowly, and then to everyone's shock, it started to incinerate. When everyone realized what was happening, they rushed over to try to rescue the body, but it was too late. The Sioux became nothing more than a pile of ashes. A loud resounding of everyone bellowing, No! filled the room. A flash of white light from the ashes then started to bounce around the room. Everyone cowered in fear and were temporarily blinded. When it was all over, things changed. All the silly goth clothes dropped from everyone's bodies. Author's note, I will refuse to explain how the hell that happened. And in their place, clothes the characters would normally wear in canon appeared on their bodies. When everyone got over the shock of becoming free of the gothic power, everybody cheered. Everyone started singing, Ding dong, the Sioux is dead. Well, that is, until all the HP characters realized the true implications of becoming more canon-like again. All the characters who were supposed to be dead fell to the floor, their bodies cold and lifeless. Harry and Voldemort started dueling. On the left side of the two, the battle of the light side and the dark side were reaching a climax. And because the replacement author also likes to screw around with canon, Draco and Hermione fled the scene and got married. Meanwhile, down in hell, Ebony shed a single tear because of her current situation. A situation that would live on for all of eternity, or at least until the end of fanfiction time. She lost it all, but she knew she had to remain strong. Nothing would ever break her down. She looked down over her pale body and frowned. Where are my emo clothes? She asked herself in confusion. And then it occurred to her. For her shirt, she was wearing a bright pink polo with a little seagull on the right or left, I can't remember, side. Below that, she was wearing a denim miniskirt with the destroyed look on it. Paired underneath that skirt were leggings with a little moose at the bottom. And then, Ebony realized, on her shoulder, she was carrying a pretty bag with an eagle on it that said, Live your life, written all over the bag. Ebony suppressed the urge to scream. Here she was decked out in clothes prepped to the extreme, wearing stuff from Abercrombie and Fitch, American Eagle, and Hollister. Panicked, Ebony hastily tried to take off the Hollister polo, but underneath it there was another Hollister polo underneath. Ebony frowned and looked under her shirt. All she saw was a bra underneath. Dare I point out that it's from the airy line available at American Eagle? Ebony tried to remove the shirt again, but to her frustration there was yet another polo to replace it. This is unlogical and does not make any sense, Ebony bellowed out to the air. She failed to see the irony in her statement, how hypocritical her words were, seeing as she was practically calling the kettle black here. Ebony slit her wrists and mumbled to herself, Oh my god. End crap fic. Author's note, Oh yeah, if you want to see the original content this chick had planned for this chapter, I accessed it through the document manager thingy, which I copied and pasted, so you can read it here. Author note, STFU prips, get a lift, you suck. Oh, and form now on, it'll be invocation in England until lick August, so I won't be able to update for a while, lols. Fangs to everyone who revolved expect the preps who flamed, fuck you, MCR rules 666. I woke up in Denorse's office on a special gothic coffin. Hairgrid was in to bed opposite me in a comma cause Vampire and Draco had bit him up. Mr. Norris was cleaning the room. Oh me Satan, what happened? I screamed. Suddenly Volksamort came. He looked less mean than usual. Get the fuck out, you fucking bastard! I yielded. Thou hath not killed Vampire yet, he said arngurly. Suddenly he started to cry tears of blood at Selective. Volksamort? OMFG, what's wrong? I asked. Suddenly, Lucian, Professor Sinister, and Sirius came. B. Lottie, Mary, and Vampire were with them. Everyone was holding black boxes. Volksamort disappeared. OMFG, Enneby, you're alive, screamed Vampire. I hugged him and Bloody Mary. What the fuck happened? I asked them. Oh my Satan, am I lick dead now? I gasped. Enneby, you were almost shot, said Sirius, but the bullet could not kill you since you were form another time. But fangs anyway, said Lucian, holding Oot his arm. I gasped. He had two arms. OMG, I can't believe Vampire's dad shot you, I gasped. Well, to be honest, Snap was possessed by Snap back then, 
said James. Yeah, he was a spy, Sirius said sadly. He was really a death dealer. And he was such a fucking poser, too, said Lucian. He didn't even really know who GC were until I told him. Well, anyway, everyone tarted to give me presents. I was opening a black box with red 666s. There was a DVD of Core Bride in it. When I gasped, Mr. Norris looked up angrily because he hated goths. Hey, has anyone fucking seen Draco? I asked gothically. No, Draco told me he would be watching House of Wax. No, Draco told me he would be watching House of Wax, said Professor Trevelry. He doesn't know that you're better. Anyway, Denor said you could get up. Come on! I got up suicidally. Lucian, Sirius, and Professor Sinister left. I was wearing a black leather night gun. Under that I had on a sexy black leather bra trimmed with black lace, with a matching thong that said gothic girl on the butt and sexy fishnets that hooked on to my thong. If you don't get the idea, massage me and I'll tell you. I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt, a black leather mini with black lace and congress shoes. I left the hospital's wings with Bloody Mary, Willow, and Vampire. OMFG, let's celebrate, gasped Willow. We can go see Hose of Wax with Draco, giggled Vampire. Let's go listen to GC and cut ourselves, 666, said Hermione. We opened a con men room door sexily, and then... I gasped. Draco was there doing it with Snap! He was wearing a black t-shirt with 666 on the front and baggy jeans. You fucking prep! We all yielded angrily. Yeah, you betrayed us, shooted Vampire angrily as he took out his black gun. No, you don't understand, screamed Draco sadly as he took his thingy out of snakes. No shit, you fucking suck, you preppy bastard, said Willow, trying to attack him. You rock, girl. I ran suicidally to my room. I sexily took a streak out. Enemy, no, screamed Draco, but it was too late. I had slit my wrists with it. Suddenly, everything went black again. Sincerely, and a non-author who will silently not reveal her identity because she's a coward, aka just a troll with rocks for brain. Chapter 40 LOL, someone has taken my account over. The idiot's note. Well, this was in the dock area. Might as well let the whole world see what the real tarot wanted to show us. Have a nice day. Author's note. Oh yeah, if you want to see the original content this chick had planned for this chapter, I accessed it through the document manager thingy, which I copied and pasted, so you can read it here. Author note. STFU prips. Get a lift. You suck. Oh, and form now on, it'll be in vocation in England until like August, so I won't be able to update for a while, lols. Fangs to everyone who revolved expect the preps who flamed, fuck you, MCR rules 666. I woke up in Norse's office on a special gothic coffin. Hairgrid was in the bed opposite me in a comma cause Vampire and Draco had bit him up. Mr. Norris was cleaning the room. Oh me Satan, what happened? I screamed. Suddenly Volksamort came. He looked less mean than usual. Get the fuck out, you fucking bastard, I yielded. Thou hath not killed a vampire yet, he said arngurly. Suddenly, he started to cry tears of blood at Selective. Volksamort? OMFG, what's wrong? I asked. Suddenly, Lucian, Professor Sinister, and Sirius came. Be Lottie Mary and Vampire were with them. Everyone was holding black boxes. Volksamort disappeared. OMFG, Enemy, you're alive, screamed Vampire. I hugged him and Bloody Mary. What the fuck happened? I asked them. Oh my Satan, am I lick dead now? I gasped. Enemy, you were almost shot, said Sirius. But the bullet could not kill you since you were form another time. But fangs anyway, said Lucian, holding Oot his arm. I gasped. He had two arms. OMG, I can't believe Vampire's dad shot you, I gasped. Well, to be honest, Snap was possessed by Snap back then, said James. Yeah, he was a spy, Sirius said sadly. He was really a death dealer. And he was such a fucking poser too, said Lucian. He didn't even really know who GC were until I told him. Well, anyway, everyone tarted to give me presents. I was opening a black box with red 666s. There was a DVD of Core Bride in it. When I gasped, Mr. Norris looked up angrily because he hated goths. Hey, has anyone fucking seen Draco? I asked gothically. 
No, Draco told me he would be watching House of Wax. No, Draco told me he would be watching House of Wax, said Professor Trevelry. He doesn't know that you're better. Anyway, Denorse said you could get up. Come on! I got up suicidally. Lucian, Sirius, and Professor Sinister left. I was wearing a black leather nightgun. Under that I had on a sexy black leather bra trimmed with black lace, with a matching thong that said gothic girl on the butt and sexy fishnets that hooked on to my thong. If you don't get the idea, massage me and I'll tell you. I put on a black fishnet top under a black MCR t-shirt, a black leather mini with black lace and congress shoes. I left the hospital's wings with Bloody Mary, Willow, and Vampire. OMFG, let's celebrate, gasped Willow. We can go see Hose of Wax with Draco, giggled Vampire. Let's go listen to GC and cut ourselves, 666, said Hermione. We opened a con men room door sexily, and then... I gasped. Draco was there doing it with Snap! He was wearing a black t-shirt with 666 on the front and baggy jeans. You fucking prep! We all yielded angrily. Yeah, you betrayed us, shooted Vampire angrily as he took out his black gun. No, you don't understand, screamed Draco sadly as he took his thingy out of snakes. No shit, you fucking suck, you preppy bastard, said Willow, trying to attack him. You rock, girl. I ran suicidally to my room. I sexily took a streak out. Enemy, no, screamed Draco, but it was too late. I had slit my wrists with it. Suddenly, everything went black again. Sincerely, and a non-author who will silently not reveal her identity because she's a coward, aka just a troll with rocks for brain. Chapter 40. LOL, someone has taken my account over. The idiot's note. Well, this was in the dock area. Might as well let the whole world see what the real tarot wanted to show us. Have a nice day. Idiot's note. Ugh, I know. Terrible. But then again, this wouldn't be called the worst fanfic ever if not for the fact that the writing standards meets the level of a day-old fetus. Chapter 41 Author's note, to everyone who kept flaming, this gets a life. I bet you probably aren't in uh, know who Garad Way is. You probably all preps and posers. No way some hacked into my account in November and they put up my last chapter, but now is a new one. I'm sorry for not updating G for a while, but I've been really busy. I'm trying to finish the story before the new movie comes out. I'm going on vacation, Amans. I won't be back until about two weeks. OMFG, Draco is so hot in all the pics for the new movie 111. I wanted them to put a cameo by Gerard into who should play Joko. If you flame, it'll slit my wrists. Raven, you rock girl, have fun in England. When I woke up, I was in a strange room. I looked around because I was wearing the same outfit I had when I performed with X Black X Tier X. I looked around confusedly. It was the Norse's office, but it looked different. On the wall was a pic of Marilyn Munson. Just imagine that he is an 80s gothic band. Too okay cause he is more than old panic at the disco or MCR. There was also a gothic black Beatles calendar with a picture of the Beatles wearing eyeliner and black clothes. On it said, 1980. OMFG, I'm back in Tim again, 111, I screamed loudly. Suddenly, Satin. This is actually Voldemort for photo reference. Voldemort was wearing a black leather Jackson, black tight jeans, and fishnet pants. He looked so sexy I almost had an orgy. OMFG, Ebony, are you okay? He asked gothically. Yeah, I'm okay for your information. I snapped sexily. OMG, am I dead? Cause I remembered I had jumped in front of the bullet from James Gunn. I also remembered seeing Draco doing it with Snap. I guessed that when I had slipped me wrists, I had went back in Tim instead of dying. I know oh, I could go forward in time if I found a time toner or the Tim machine. No, you're not dead, Satan reassured suicidally as he smoked a cigarette sexily and smoke came all over his face. You're a vampire, so you can't die from a bullet. Come on now, let's go see how Harry's dead is doing. I know that the real reason I didn't die from the ballet was cause I was from the future. WTF, James almost shot Lucius? I said in Degalgali. I knew that James had been possessed, but I didn't want him to know I knew. Yeah, but I know he had a headache because he was under a lot of stress, Satan reasoned evilly. 
I guess that's okay, I said, because James hadn't really shot Lucian. Also know that Lucian would now have two arms instead of one. I walked seductively outside with Satan. Suddenly, I saw a totally sexy gothic bi guy. He had bletched blonde hair with black streaks up to his ears, and he was wearing gothic black illiner. A black Green Day shirt, it showed Billy Joel with blonde hair since it was the 80s, black Congress shoes, and black baggy pants. He walked in all sexly like Garrod Wave in the video, I don't three you like I did yesterday, and you could see a black tear on his face like the moon in that video. Hey, he said all quietly and guffishly. Who the fuck is that? I asked angrily, cause I did not know him. This is Hedwig, said Volksmort. He used to be an X Black X Tier X too, but he had to drop out because he broke his arm. Hey, Hedwig, I said seductively, even though I was nut tring to be. LOL, hi, enemy, he answered, but then he ran away because he had hair of magical creatures. His was humming welcome to the Black Parade under his breath. I know that is not 80s, but pretend it is, okay? Bye, I said all sexily. Dad was Hegwig. He used to be my boyfriend before we broke up, Satan said sadly, looking at his black nails. OMFG, I can get you back together, I said, fingering something I didn't know was in my pocket. A black coot is what we aim for CDO iPod that I could take videos with. Does anyone else know about them? They kick ass. Okay, you can forget about your class for now, Hedwig. I'm going to show you something great. I led them to the Great Hall. Come on, you guys. Lucian, James, Sirius, and Snake were all in the Great Hall. Lucian wouldn't talk with James because he had tried to shoot him. Go fuck yourself, you fucking douche, he shouted at him. Draco is never gone to be friends with Vampire now. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Samaro. Snape agreed, but I knew he was lying because he had been his fault. James had almost shot Lucian. Be quiet, you guys, I said sexily. Me plan was working oot great. Now I could make Voldemort good without doing it with him. Now Vampire's dad would never die. And, okay Satan and Hedwig, you guys can start making out, I said, and I started to film them with the iPod. Cool, said Sirius, as Voldemort and Hedwig started to make out sexily. We watched as today started to take each other's clothes off sexily. Samaro, Sirius, Snake, and Lucian all watched cause they wear probably by. I knew Snape was by. Oh my fucking god! Voldemort! Voldemort! Screamed Hedwig as his glock touched Voldemort's. But suddenly everything stopped as the door opened and in came Dumbledore and Mr. Norris. Chapter 42 The Black Parade Author's note, OMG, the new book is coming out really soon, I can't wait. I think that Snape will be really the same person as Volksamort, cause they are both half-blood, so that will explain why he killed Dumbledore and he hated Harry. And then Harry will have to commit suicide, so Voldemort will die, cause he will really be a horcrux. OMG, I hope Draco and Harry get together, that will be so schmexy, won't it? If they don't, then JKR is homophobic. Fangs for to help with facts, Medusa, you rock. I sat depressedly in Dumbledore's office with Hedwig, Satan, James, Sirius, Snap, and Lucian. Dumbledore was sitting in front of us cruelly. He looked more young than he did in the future. He had taken the iPod away and was now listening to a shitty Avril Lavigne song. What the hell is this anyway? He cracked meanly. I hope he didn't find out that I was from another time. Whatever you do, don't blame Ibony, you jerk, Satan said. Yeah, seriously, she was trying to get Satan and Hedwig back together, Sirius said deviantly. Be quiet, you Satanists, Dumbledore cockled. If you're lucky, I'll probably send you all to Azkaban. That will teach you to copulate in the Great Hall. He changed the song on the iPod to an in-sync song. Suddenly, I noticed something strong about the iPod. It was slowly chonging. Dumbledore didn't notice. You fucking poser, I muttoned. I bet you've never heard of GC, James said. Know how I knew what the iPod was chonging into Morty McFly's Tim machine? Shut up, Jones, Draco's dad shouted. Yeah, shut up, Snake said preppily. No, you shut up, Dumbledore, said Tom. I've had enough of you Satanists in my school, shouted Dumbledore spuriously. Suddenly, I grabbed the iPod from him. 
everyone jump in before it's too late. I jumped into it, but only one otter person jumped in. It was Satan. You dunderheads, screamed Dumbledore wisely as we went. I looked around. I was in the Slytherin conmen room with Satan. I was wearing a black plaid miniskirt with hot pink fishnets, a sexy black MCR corset, and black stiletto boots with pink pentagrams on them. My earrings were Blake's Satanist sins, and my raven hair was all around me to mid-back. Hey, cool, where is Diz? He asked in an emo voice. This is the future. Dumbledore's iPod that he tried to take away from me was also a Tim machine, I told him. Cool, what's an eye patch? He whimpered. It's something you use to listen to music, I yacked. OMFG, cool, wait, what's a four-letter word for dirt? He asked in his sexa voice. Um, I guess sand? I laid confusedly. Yeah, I was just trying to make sure you were still the same person, he triumphantly giggled. Suddenly, some of my friends walked in. OMFG, you're fucking alive, said Ginny, wearing a black leather jacket, black baggy pants, and a gothic black from first to last shirt. I explained to her why I was still alive. Konnichiwa, bitch, said Willow. She was wearing a black corset showing off her boobs with lace all around it and red stripes on it. With it, she was wearing a black leather miniskirt, big black boots, white foundation, black eyeliner, red eyeshadow, and black lipstick. Hey, motherfucker, said Diabolo with his red hair. He was wearing a black P A T D T shit and black baggy pants. Hey, who's that, Ebony? Bloody Mary questioned as she walked in wearing a black t-sheet, red leather pants with black lace, and black stolatos. Oh, it's Satan, I told her, and she nodded, knowing the truth. Suddenly, Satan started to cry. Are you okay, Satan? We asked concernedly. OMFG, you're from the future. What if you don't like mm anymore because we're from different times? He asked. No, I still like you, I said sexily to him. Okay he said reassuredly. I let him listen to teenagers by MCR on my iPod while I was about to go outside to find some things. I gave Diabolo a signal to keep Satan occupied. Satan fell asleep. I took the iPod. I was about to walk outside. Professor Sinister ran in. She was wearing a gothic black mini dress with depressing black stripes, white and black stripped tights, and red Converse shoes. She was wearing lots of black illiner. Oh my fucking god, where's Draco? How did Snap get back here? I thought he was in Azerbaijan, I asked sadly. Ebony, I was so worried, Abbott, you, but I know you can't fucking die because you're a vampire. Snape came back because that girl Brittany freed him. I never liked her. She was a bad student, Trevelry said reassuredly. That bitch! Did she also free Hargrid and Lupin? I shouted angrily. I hated Brittany because she was a fucking prep. Yes, they are on the loose at this school. Dumbledore is back. Cornelia is on his way to help everyone. Tell everyone you see to lock themselves in their con man room, Trevelry said worriedly. Okay, but where's Draco? How come he was doing it with Snap? I don't know, but I know he almost tried to commit suicide after he saw you almost kill yourself, she said. OMG, that's terrible, I gasped. Satan was still asleep, so he couldn't tell what was going on. Then I said, Listen, everyone, I have something impotent to do. In her, everyone stay. With that, I ran out. Good luck, Tara, everyone cried. I ran sexily down the stairs into the great hall, while the portraits around me looked scaredly. There was hardly one else in the stairs, and terror was an atmosphere of horror. On the way, I saw Brittany laughing on the stairs. She was wearing a slutty pink shirt with flowers on it, a blue jean skirt, Abercrombie, and pink stilettos. She looked just like a pentagram of those fucking preps, Hilary Duff and Lindsay Lohan. You fucking bitch! I shouted angrily. No, you're totally a bitch. Now Voldemort will, like, totally kill you! She laughed. Crucius! I shouted, selectively pontificating my black wand, and she started screaming because she was being tortured, and I laughed sadistically. No! Help me! Please! Brittany screamed terrifiedly. I put up my middle finger at her. In her hand, I saw the video camera Snape and Lumpin had used to take the video of me. I put the tape of Voldemort doing it with Hedwig onto it. Then I continued to round down the stairs with the camera. When I had reached a great hall, I saw Vampire Potter. OMG, Vampira! I yielded. We hugged each other happily. 
He locked at me with his gothic red eyes and spiky black hair. Around them were black eyeliner and eyeshadow. His he was wearing a black leather Jackson leather pants, a Panic at the Disco concert shirt, and his black Congress shoes. He looked more like Joel from Good Charlotte than ever. Did you hear the song, The River It Rocks? I was so worried you died, moaned Vampire. I know, but I'm a vampire, lol. When I woke up, I was back in 1980, so new way I bought Voltimort from where he was Jung with me. Where's Draco? I asked spuriously. Draco? You mean that fucking poser who betrayed you? Vampire snarkled with anger in his sexy voice. I know, but we have to find him, I said smarty. I'll do it then, Harry said angstily. Okay, I argued. Suddenly, all the lights in the room went out. And then, the dork mork appeared. Oh my fucking Satan, Harry shouted. I think Voldemort has arrived, I said anxiously. Fuck, I have to find Draco. I guess we should separate. Okay, Vampire said, disappearing. Sadly, I ran into the Great Hall. Chapter 43 Author's note, I think after Diff I will have about two or three more chapters. Thanks to all my reviewers, not Das Flamers. If you flame this story, then you suck. If you flame, then fuck you. I walked sexily into the Great Hall. It was empty except for one person. Draco was there. He sat in der deadly bloom with his black 666 t-shirt and his blacky bag pants. He had slit his wrists. I felt mad at him for having sex with Snape, but I felt sorry for him. He looked just like Gerard Way with his red eyes and his pale white face. Draco, are you okay? I asked. I'm not okay, he screamed depressedly. I thought of the MCR song, and I got even more depressed because that song always makes me cry. I gave him a pot cigarette and he started to smoke it. Oh, Draco, why did you do it with that fucking bastard Snape? I asked tear dully. I... Draco began to say, but suddenly Lupin and Mr. Norris appeared in the room. They didn't see us. I'm so glad we, me, and Snape were freed, said Lupin. Damn, this job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking students, Mr. Norris agreed. Pop Adelum! I yielded angrily, pointing my wand at them. No! Lupin shouted as chains came onto him. Mr. Norris ran away. You fucking perv! I said, laughing with depths of evil and depressedness in my voice. Now you have to tell us where Voldemort is, or I'm going to torture you. I don't know where he is, said Lupin. Suddenly, Satan and Vampire ran into the room. Vampire didn't know who Satan was, really. Oh my Satan, we were so worried about you guys, Vampire said. I looked sexily at Draco, with his gothic red eyes with contacts, black t-shirt that said 666 on it, and pale skin like Gerard Way. Vampire with his sexy black hair and red eyes just like Frank Iero and Satan, who looked just like Brandon Uri then. I selectively took the caramel from my pocket, and then I began Frenching Draco sexily. Lupin gasped. Draco began to take all his clothes off, and I could see his white sex pack. Then Vampire took his own clothes off too. We all began making out together sexily. I took off my black leather bra, my black lace thong, and the rest of my clothes, Everyone took their glocks out except for me. I'm a girl, lol. Oh, me Satan. Draco! I screamed as he put his hardness into my thingy. Then he did the same thing to Harry. I began making out with Satan and he joined in. OMS! cried Vampire. Oh, Vampire! Vampire! I screamed, screamed. Oh, Satan! yelled Harry in pleasure. Lupin watched in shock. We took turns doing torture curses on him because we were all sadists. Suddenly. Chapter 44 Author's note, Well, I have nothing to say, but everyone stoop glamming, okay? If any gothic people are reading this, then you rock. OMG, I still can't wait for the movie. Tom Fletton is so hot. LOL, I hop Harry will become gothic because me friend told me he is really emo in this book's... Um, I'm leaving W pretty soon, but can't wait. This will probably be the last chapter until I come back. That's me car, shooted Dranko angrily. But suddenly it was revealed who was in that car. It was Snape. I shall free you, Lupin, but first you must help me kill these idiotic donder heads, he said cruelly from the car as it flew circumcising above us. Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway must be killed. 
Then the Dark Lord shall never die. You fucking prep! Yelled Draco. Then he locked at me sadly. I forgot to tell you, Ebony. Snape made me do it with him. I didn't really have sex with him, but he's a ropist. We all put our clothes on quickly except Satan. We were so scarred. But Satan didn't change. Instead, he changed into a man with gren eyes, no nose, a gray robe, and white skin. He had changed too. Voldemort! I knew who thou were all along. He cackled evilly and sarcastically at me. Now I shall kill thee all. Thunder came into room. No, please, don't kill us, pleaded Vampire. Suddenly, Willow, Bloody Mary, Diabolo, Ginny, Drocula, Fred, and Gorge, Hargrid, McGonagall, Dumbledore, Sirius, and Lucian all ran in. What is the meaning of this? Dumbledore asked all angrily, and Voldemort looked away, because Dumbledore is the only wizard he is scared of. He did a spell, and suddenly his broomstick came to him sexily. Volksamort flew above the roof evilly on his broomstick. Oh my goth, Slughorn gasped. Get it, because I'm gothic. The Dark Lord shall kill all of you, then you must submit to him, Snape ejaculated menacingly. You fucking preppy fags, Sirius shouted angrily. I know a four-letter word for dirt. Cruciatus, screamed Harry, but the sparks from his wand only hate Draco's car. It fell down snap quickly, crowled out of it, and picked up the kiddio camera. Oh my fucking god, I cried because the video of me in the bathroom, the video of me dong it with Draco, and the video of Satan doing it with... If you kill me, then these videos will be shown to everyone in the skull, then you can be just like that gothic girl, Paris Hilton. He laughed meanly. No, I screamed. FYI, I have the picture of you doing it with Lupin. What's she talking, Abbott? Lupin slurped as he sat in chains. I saw too she's gonna show everyone to pick to, Harry shouted angrily. Shut up, Lumpkin roared. Foolish ignoramuses, yielded Voldemort from his broomstick. Thou shall all die soon. Think again, you fucking muggle poser, Harry yelled, and then he and Diablo and Naval both took out black guns, but Voldemort took out his own one. You guys are in a Latin standoff, I shouted desperately. Accio Neville's wand, cried Voldemort, and suddenly Neville's wand was in his hand. Now I shall kill thee all, and Ebony, you will die. He made lightning come all over the place. Save us, Ebony, Dumbledore cried. I cried sexily. I just wanted to go to the conmen room and slit my wrists with me friends while we watched Shark Attack 3 and Saw 2 and do it with Draco, but I knew I had to do something more impotent. Abracadabra! I shooted. This has been an audio reading of My Immortal. Written by Tara Gillespie. Narrated by James Tullis. What the fuck?